Chasing the Racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki. Part of the Global Moto Group, we supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode 149, and we're delighted to be joined by Piggy Pete. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, were, we were supposed to be at Donington testing today, but the weather is absolutely atrocious, so we're almost in April. It's actually the last day in March today, as we we'll record this, and it's uh, it's snowing outside, and yeah, it's just I, the last thing I would have wanted to be doing is going down uh, Craner Curves today, so uh, I so yeah. we thought we'd put the day to good use, and uh, Dom's kindly uh, taking the day off work and come down and we'll get some podcasting in I'm yeah. de- i was about to say you and me were having the crack though piggy it's definitely uh, a day that we're not totally heartbroken uh, about missing a bit of graft mike no so. no not day for work is it <laughs> I've, i'm about to put my thick t-shirt on it's cold but, no, i tell you what though you are a corporate slag i'm a big fan of your oh. work any opportunity like that get he's on the telly he's on the radio <laughs> 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 Crow performance top representing so hey but I tell you what I think we should go straight yeah. in with the questions and, uh, well, I will just say because uh, we have had Piggy on a couple of times on the podcast but obviously as the podcast goes on we get sort of new listeners so there will be some people listening and watching who maybe have no idea oh. who you are so just to quickly say you're, you're my mechanic and also uh, Dom's mechanic yeah. and uh, you've yeah, Yorkshire's been, answer and... for Tom Jones really you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> but I am unusual <laughs> Oh, stop it. We're burning down the house here. <laughs> that is... <laughs> anyway, let's. Jolt. But she's a lady, so we better crack on here. <laughs> <laughs> How can we done. get so many Tom Jones songs in? Go on, give me one more. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know that many, did he? What's new? Because he's got Why or Delilah? Oh, so, Delilah, yeah. yeah, yeah God, I'm, 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 I'm feeling like a right yeah. Tom Jones pervy. Yeah. So anyway, let's <laughs> let's swerve around this one. Let's crack on. <laughs> Hi, so um, obviously the season's just about to start, but uh, have you had a good sort of off-season, Piggy? Have you been up to much? Yeah, just steady away. I've got a little 400 on the... I've been like doing that up a bit, just tidying it up. I'm a bit soft. Uh, Maxton, they they've looked after me, and yeah, yeah, it's been yeah, been a good job. Is that because uh, of the celebrity status? Ah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. like that. It's piggy here. Yeah. Oh, Do you know, gosh, when you're negotiating bill. the price, do you say, "Well, I'll give you a shout out on the podcast next time." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's got to now. Uh, to <laughs> and uh, Aaron at Paint Cave, he's he's done me. Like a bit of painting up and that, yeah, yes. But, yeah. So it's it's looking it's looking good. It's taking shape, looking well. Yeah. Are, you, are you pleased the season's nearly here? Uh, I'm, I'm ready. You do miss it, don't you? You know, it makes you wonder how you went on in lockdown. You know, when there were nothing for that, even winter, you're sort of thinking, oh, it's, it'll be soon. It'll be soon. How much downtime did you take at the first slot? It feels like a lifetime ago now, and oh, two years ago. It was ages. Uh, we missed about three. Well, uh, I missed a good bit, really. A good couple of months, good right. three months. Yeah. Right. Just getting stuff, and it was just yeah, yeah, a bit busy now, sort of thing. So, about to say prices mm. on everything will be going through. Where every yeah, don't even talk about. Let, let let's go down this scary avenue of diesel. Do you know how much red oh. diesel is now? Mm. I don't fully enough. <laughs> I know how much white diesel I t- is. I t- I t- Jamie Hamilton, he would know about red diesel prices straight off the uh, bat. It's like yeah. one pound thirty-two yeah. for red yeah. pump for red diesel. Out the pump. That's not really no, that much it, cheaper than the... I mean, it's 170 no, no, in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, for the forestry lads, at the yard, so like um, they charge more money to bring the diesel to the site, you know, just for wear and tear on it. But they're paying £1.11 at the yard for diesel, red diesel. Mm. Heartbreaking. Stopped, yeah. Heartbreaking. And it used to be way cheaper, didn't oh, it? For like 50 pence a litre, man. It's mental, it's, oh, but they're doing away with it, aren't they? Tomorrow's like, they're doing away with red. There's only forestry... Ag- agriculture and forestry and, that's it and fishing in there mm-hmm. because i went over there um when i when i battered my face in um i went over to ireland and they were dip i tell you what i've I, like i got dipped there on the way back and the proper clamping down on everyone so mm. my, i think we're like full supporters of running red diesel the amount of times we've run it on this show Do you know what? i was <laughs> i was um i was out last night for a korean the uh, one of the lads that was out Derek met told us <laughs> That there's a there's a uh, Facebook group in in over in Ireland and it's it's like basically the red diesel watch. So if they dip in tanks, you like you you post the location of. So basically you like you check it like before your journey and you know where. So you know uh, where they're like dipping and also the TV license the TV license people that come around as well. But uh, I, so if you're, TV license, that's yeah, brilliant. Like, but um, 
um, I spot no, going into the season. Obviously, you're going to be busy because, as well as the the full BSB season, you're also going to commit to quite a lot of the road racing with Dom. Have yeah. you actually sat down and worked out the calendar of like how many weekends you're going to be away? Don't, don't put them off. Uh, don't not, put not them all off. of it. Yeah, I've sort of got it written in a bit of a diary, but I'm just going to because the lad who I used to work with, he's sort of retired, so mm-hmm. it's just me now. So I'm doing sort of smaller jobs. So if there's just me, I can sort of work around hmm. things a bit better and not worry about having to sort of get work lined up for him. Aye. Are you looking? So, are you looking for a labour? Are we? Uh, I don't know yet, really. Mm-hmm. I'm sort of all right doing what send, I'm doing. Send C- CVs to Peter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Peter underscore Haynes. <laughs> <at. Yeah. laughs> That's what I'm saying. For, pe- for people not like who won't know who you are, it's like are you, are you still very much in the? You tell us what 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 is the the forward of going piggy here. Well, I don't know. Like I say, you get some. I'm sort of enjoying it, sort of being, sort of working on, not working on my own because it's sort of nice to have a bit of company. But I have wireless on and a bit of Planet Rock or whatever. And, but yeah, it's just I don't know. Having somebody else, it's always can be a bit unreliable. And you know, when you find somebody who's good, it's all right. But Aye. there's a lot who aren't good out there. So that's it. But what what do you mainly do for our new listeners? Uh, well, uh, block drug dealer, aren't you? Yeah, so yeah. But a... Now and again. <laughs> bit of drug dealing now and again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, block paving, uh, landscaping, and stuff like that. There we go. And slabbing. And, yeah. There isn't a single person that isn't isn't busy. I tell you what. Briefly going back to the fuel crack. Now that you've done your first test, was fuel more expensive? Like the race fuel? Have they? Uh, uh, no, it's, it, put, it, it came closer price wise, didn't it? I think yeah. not, it's not gone up as much as. That's good to hear. That's really good to hear. <laughs> uh, we will come on because obviously we've had our first uh, BSB test down at Snedden last weekend and there's obviously lots to talk about. But uh, just before we get on to that, um, since the accident, you've had your first run out on a bike, a little bit on the pit bike and then out on a proper bike and uh, mm-hmm. had a really successful weekend down up, up at Croft and uh, it was really cool to see... Um, obviously, well, obviously we'll talk about it, but really cool to see you take the, the lead of Croft back to the countings so uh congratulations for that and uh, no, was it was it good to get back out on the bike yeah it was um obviously very nerve-wracking you know like like we were saying on the last part that i decided to try and swallow a chainsaw hole um i was a bit nerve-wracked about the eye you know i'm thinking how is it going to work you know i'm thinking what i was really nervous about was wind believe it or not mm. i know i know we're wearing helmets and stuff like that but i'm just thinking to myself coming up underneath the chin i'm thinking is this going to buffer about is it going to distort it and being honest it was a lot better than i thought it was going to be you know and it's because i haven't got the ability to fully blink i have to like more squint and actually forcibly push my eye down to make it clear oh. but i i got it done i've got a second quicker than i ever have around croft on a 600 which i'm over the moon with the super twin was absolutely flying we were like, um, <laughs> they were, it was nice to just get out in front and stay out of everyone's way on that side of things. But um, how do you know the difference in lap speed between the six hundred and the twin? What what was the difference? I was only four. It was four seconds difference. So it was like uh, between between the bikes, and it was uh, no, it was good. But the weather was a massive game. Like you were briefly discussing beforehand, the fact that it's miserable snowing and rubbish oh. and cars are sliding off the roads back at home and that and last weekend we were all getting suntans weren't we it was lovely weren't it silk but snap were beautiful absolutely fantastic but uh, like even going into that weekend um, I tell you what I must give a massive shout out to Joe Burns what a rider he is man he can pedal a motorcycle he did stock thousand for years and he's been in the British paddock for many years you must have raced against him no it was before my time right my god he he could pedal Mm. a bike and what a learning kit like I've done a couple of Britishes before. I've done one on the stock foul and I've done two in super sport. Now, when I've qualified, I've been at the back. That's the blunt side of it. I've been at the back. And when you're going out for your first lap, everyone off the start line, you're going in, everyone almost finds a rhythm. You know, you just make your moves and pass. But I've never been on the front row against a British rider. I tell you what, the com- the commitment off the warmers, mm-hmm. you know, the warm-up lap and stuff like uh, that. And now yeah. all the, the rest of us, like especially like, because I've not done a lot of it. It was like the first lap of the race, you're still building up the heat in the tyre. First corner, Joe was just on its ear and just giving it full throttle. And I mean, I, could, I was matching Joe Burns' times, but he just bridged the gap immediately. Huh. And it was just like, Jesus, wept. And you're thinking, all you lads are doing that exact same thing. It's just like no hesitation. And having watching that firsthand, it's, that is crucial for the Isle of Man because you think like John McGuinness... He was really the first big game changer, wasn't he? 
in my yeah, opinion. Because yeah. he was doing 130s from lap one, like stand still laps. And you think he was just breaking the time down immediately when everyone else was getting warmed up. And you think really going into the Isle of Man without taking the piss, obviously, Chrissy, but I'm going to have to, well, just not wait. On really. that V for Victor video with Joey, yeah, he sort of gets through Union Mills and then he says, right, you're through here now. You, your tyres are sort of up to temperature. You can start and, and like that's what, four, four mile out. Yeah, like that? yeah, exactly. No, and that, that's the thing. You go up like, I, I'm exact same. I'm like, I get the Braddon and I've scrubbed the right-hand side of Quarter Bridge and I get the Braddon. It's like I've scrubbed the left-hand side. Then you go into Union Mills. Like you say, you've, yeah. you've generated heat there. And then after that, it, it, it's full charge. But... These big, well, look at what Harrison, Hickman, is the much? all the front lads are just going in the quarter bridge first lap and just going, but they pre scrubbed the tyres, you know. Well, I was going to say, is there much time mm. between the um, taking the tyre warms off to setting off at the TT? The further mm. down the line you are, mm. because yeah. like, in the hold, in, like, so that there's no mechanics past this point. So okay. once the siren's going off, you're starting to go down the road, you can imagine from when, number one, John McGuinness, for example, this year, he'll have the hottest tyres from the word go because there is a little bit of a time delay. We've got 10 second gap. So, mm. so say 1 to 20, Craig Neve at 20, the really first time seeded rider as well, he'll go flying this year. He really will do mint. He'll have longer off the warmers, but it's like a mile and a half to quarter bridge. Is that right? It'll be a mile. Uh, you yeah, tell yeah, me. Yeah, mileish. Yeah, yeah, is it yeah, the pub? Yeah. You know, we we mm. we've we walked it a few times, me and Piggy, like from the grandstand <laughs> straight down. It's a mile going, three mile coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Sideways, <laughs> I. And then, but no, like you say, that generates a lot of heat, but it's the confidence to lie it on its ear, you know, like immediately. But what I find, like they all scrub the tires. Mm. Hutchie scrubs his tires. Dave or Johnson scrubs his tire. McGuinness scrubs his tires. They go like Jerby, and they've just got loads and loads of wheels. They just go out, put another wheel in, do another lap, put another wheel in, scrub all their tyres in. So there's not that shine element. I'll tell you what, is a do you is that ever does that phase you? No, you know, the not, shine of a new tyre. So it's a bit like you know when you go out. Not um not at all. No, after, that's after, interesting. Like, after, yeah, well, um, I think when when I very first started r racing, like about twelve years ago, we used, you used to think to yourself, "Oh, we'll like warm, uh, like scrub the tires in, and maybe do a lap or mm. two. And then ever since, for the last like I would say for the last seven eight years, I've never really considered it. It's um, yeah. the tires are ready to go, like f off the warmers. That's that's the interesting on, thing. In superbikes, yeah. you change you you put your tires on on the grid, so you do your sighting lap, and then you put a new tire in, and you still get a warm up lap. But even yeah. with that, you know, mm -hmm. like the, um, the yeah, I think they are just ready to go. Like yeah, yeah much, they are pretty much. Aren't they? But you wouldn't dream to do it on your VFR four hundred on no. a road tire, would you? Oh no, no, no. <laughs> I wonder if they made a different because it's like the releasing agent for getting a tire off it. Mm -hmm. To be fair, I don't actually mold. know. I don't know about slicks because I've I've had uh, very little yeah. experience. I'll sort of find that out soon. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> on the super stock tires, I would yeah, uh. pretty, they're ready to go like straight away. Um, and in, in fact, as the tyres get sort of softer and softer, you with, I mean, with the really soft tyres, you only got like a real, sm like a few laps to get your fastest lap in. So you, your peak grip comes on like either lap two, but maybe mm -hmm. like you do one lap and then your peak grips that next lap. And then after that, it's dropping off every, so if you did like three laps to bed in, you've lost all the good tyre. But then the good thing about the Pirellis, what well, you lads tell me, it just seems to, like everyone, all the riders at briefings always says the tyre drops off, but it doesn't drop off, drop off, does it? Well, you, you tell me. I tend to find with the Pirellis mm -hmm. here, they're like grip, 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 and then you get they just get more wallow. But it's not like an out of control thing. It doesn't seem to degrade anymore. But you are considerably faster than me, Mister Ralph. Mm. So you you tell you tell me. Like I said, I, I can't really say much about slicks because I haven't done much on them. But uh, even like super the stock, stock tires, yeah, super stock tires. Uh, you can um, this, yeah, especially if you if you're on like lap record, you can maybe get a race distance out of them, and then they start going off a little bit. But if you if you're a couple of seconds off the, I mean, yeah. When I, when I was doing, it's so in 2020, the first time I rolled that bike, I did, it was something like a day and a half or two days on the set of scrubs. Because uh, yeah. like, I was, and I was doing like, say, 33s, 34s around Cadwell, 30, yeah, maybe 32s. Yeah. But you can, I could do like all day on that without scrubbing the tyres, without using them. Mm. But, but as soon as you go to like 29s, you, you're like, 
you you're pushing through Sma them. Yeah, sma you get like a race distance out of them, and, and they were wearing beautiful, weren't they? That yeah, that, that mm, day. mega. But um, yeah, but uh, I know you haven't really talked about it, but the uh, winning the Laird of Crofts, I oh. guess. Is is that the mega heavy trophy that's insured for loads? No, so there, that's the Ken Redford. Um, so that's up. that's for the fact that I would love to win. I would love to win that one. So Croft have these awards, and like yeah, the North East Club represent them awards for the um on behalf of Croft even. So. The Laird of Croft is the 600 trophy. Yeah. So it's like a point system based over the two days of riding. Same with the Ken Redford, but for the 1,000 class. But you can end there 600 in that. I actually got a second place in the open race. Oh, well done. Chicken Charlton was flying on that R1. I was um, I was doing the same times as him on the big bike. And it was just like chomping away. But unfortunately, North East Club didn't have any um, tyre service. So we couldn't change tyres. So we're doing the same things, like, but the, the, no, but the mad thing is, I actually made it fair, really, because no one could change tires, you know. What I mean? So it was like out you go, and if you didn't have another set on the rim, or you didn't have someone in a van that could swap them for you, it, everyone was going out on the same knackered rubber. It was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But uh, no, so like uh, Joe Burns, um, I learned a hell of a lot from him. Um, he beat me in two, and I beat him in two. And uh, hold on, no, 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 no trying to think he had a dnf unfortunately he had a dnf um bit something went up with his bike and then i i won that race and then the next race after that i won that one so it gave me enough points to, to come home with that trophy but for me it was same thing again i thought I'll, I'll never i'll never win that trophy but what made i've never i was shaking like a shitting dog before that race <laughs> i'm not gonna lie because for the counting family james has won that trophy every year since 2014 and when you look at the names before that, it was huge, mm -hmm. you know, and James used to turn up and upset everyone. He nearly beat Barry Teasdale on a 600, you know, and like, and we all know Barry, Barry's a, he's uh, a hell yeah. of a go, especially on a big bike. And being able to chase, like, uh, being able to bring home that trophy for the Counting family was it was a uh, it was brilliant, you know. The, to mm. just give to give that trophy back to Fran was it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. But more importantly, I didn't write his bike off. So <laughs> <laughs> and like the the eye was um, no. It, you know, and the good thing is the uh, I've got to acclimatize the eye a bit more. You know what I mean? Right. It's it's definitely not a safety issue. It, it it blurs about a bit. But I need two more surgeries to fix it. Oh, I tell you what, though, you'll never believe this. So I went in to see my surgeon, and unfortunately, he did say it. it what's happened to my eye is worst case scenario, because I kind of went in going, oh, everything will be fine, because I've been up and down to see Aidan Doncaster, and, and I, I, I trust that man with an inch of my life, and he's saying, look, look, it's you'd be fit to ride, and he's been doing a lot of head movement with us and getting everything to work. But when I went to see the surgeon, he was proper like, it, this has gone the worst case scenario. Because I've opened up my eyebrow and topped my skull and mm. the eyelid, he's reconstructed. Unfortunately, the eyelid and the eyebrow have taken a shortcut on each other and they've fused together. So I need more surgery to separate the eye off from each other. So, I, But the recovery time of that is seven weeks. So he's going to hold off after the TT because the eye is drying out a bit. But it's not, like I say, it's not a safety mm. issue. But what they're going to have to do is um, they're going to have to do a skin graft. So they've got two options. One's behind my ear, and the other, where there's a lot of loose skin, is off your foreskin. Mm -hmm. That might send you cock eyed. Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! I knew! I knew! I was. I'm, I mean, honestly, when I tipped up here, when I tipped up here, I'm thinking, how am I going to get this joke in? And I, and I just looked at you and I went, that fucker's going to get it before anyone else. I'm like, you son of a... So, no, right, you... <laughs> Aidan Robinson said that to me, right? Honestly, I was, I was... You might get a bit of foresight as well. <laughs> Oh God, I was gonna I should have said nothing, but there you go. But in Rom, I'll tell you what though, that's how much I trust him. He's on the phone to us. And he's like, uh, Dominic, yeah, when you go to see the surgeon, they may say you need a skin graft. And he was bang on the money on that, he can't. But because of where the head is and everything like that, he said he actually said to me, um, ask him to take it off your foreskin. I'm going. So it had been done. No, 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 no. There, there, there's, me, there's me going. He's having me on here. And I, like, all see, he was so straight faced. Like, he was like on the phone going, seriously, Dominic, the thing is, you know, back your head with a helmet, it'll knock you concentrate. I'm like, right, right. And I'm, I'm sitting here on the phone going, I'm going to have to get, I'm going to have to get the hood nipped off here. I'm, I'm fully in a state of panic. And he told me that cock eyed thing. And it took five <laughs> minutes to sink in. He's going, 
really but I'm worried about my eye and he goes nah you will definitely end up cock eyed I'm like but I don't want that in and then I literally sit there no, I, just, I was just totally absorbed in the fact of going I'm going to lose my hood here and he's I could I could hear Sally Aiden's wife in the background like tears are rolling and I'm like what's she watching the telly I could nothing was sinking in at all and he goes cock eyed not they're not going to take off your foreskin, you bloody idiot, but make sure you put on Chase the Racer, but this dingbat's <laughs> ruined it. There you go. Are you getting a skin graft, though? No, so yeah, all, all seriousness, I'll need a skin graft from the back of my ear to make a spacer because the skin's gone too tight, so the eyelid's open, which is actually beneficial for me instead of having it dropped. So, But the good thing about my surgeon from the NHS there, he's going to keep going till it's right. So in the winter, they're going to have to pretty much stitch my eyes shut and everything like that and I'm going to have to go and do a different job for the winter so if there's not enough at the back of your ear you can use these babies <laughs> <laughs> plenty on that's them it. for you well you know you know the, you know the, you know the skin that's behind you, uh, like you, that loose bit there yeah, well, it's yeah. not even loose it's like that's the only bit that can replicate it off so you're going to have to put a, a spacer in and then go at it again because it'll drop the eye and I think well and if the skin graft didn't take for whatever reason and we're talking how many days is it? It's less than 60 or something. It, it's even less than that now. Mm. I, and I haven't even been mm. on the big bite yet at all. You know, I've only been on a mm. big bite twice in the last two years. And I'm like, oh, you know, I, I can't afford. Hence wearing these little, um, see, I think one of the letters is rubbed out. It was S, deflectors. I don't know what the other letter is on the, <laughs> on the other side of it. It was like a really cheap brand mm. and yeah, something like that. Very resistant to... Sticky chemicals or something like that. So anyway, I got these and these these help for the. I don't need glasses, but the blue light on your phone. Mm. So it's a right pain in the ass, man. Just knocks your eyes. We were having the crack with it beforehand, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're all the same. It's just on the laptop all the time. But there we go. But anyway, enough about my shite. I've been very lucky that I'm there. Uh, I've been back on the bike. I can't thank the counting team enough. I can't help all the sponsors. I just. Very, very lucky. I've, I said this all the last podcast, but I know how lucky I've been, and I yeah, just can't wait to get um, Cookstown next to me uh, at the end of middle of April. Some point in April, I'm going over to Ireland to race a bike, so I can't wait. Mint, can't wait. So, Is that uh, like a national meeting? Yes, so the uh, Cookstown, then yeah, it's it's... Tamragee after that. So are you doing Tam? Tam yeah, yeah, yeah. So doing Tamragee on um, on the Davies machines. Right. So I'm just on the classic bikes at Tamragee. Right. Then I'm doing just the Counting 600 and Super Twin. At Cookstown, yeah, and then we plan between there and then is um, I'm going to do East Fortune at Melville on the big bike for the weekend. Hopefully, it's not pissing down with snow, mm-hmm. and um, I'm going to try and get some track days in and stuff like that. This is all before the Northwest. Yeah, wow. So you am busy, busy uh, next. Oh, but I, I, I need, I need more luck. I think mm-hmm. I'm used to all my, my luck card. But yeah, there it it's not long to Northwest, is it? No. Nah. But it, well, it's not that long till the TT, really. No, no. Well, you're kindly, you've said you're going to come for the whole, I hope you haven't changed your mind. You said well, you'll come for the whole TT, aren't you? Yeah, ah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And you're coming for how much of the Northwest again? Thursday. Mint. For Thursday practice, I'll be there. Ideal. That Thursday night. It's Thursday morning flight. Is Flick coming? Yeah. For both? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Ideal. But he's not doing full session at TT. Right. He's, a, he's doing Thursday practice week at TT. Absolutely. And me and you are coming out Monday. The practice week, yeah, mint, and then come back following Sunday. Mm, following, are you yeah. bringing? Are you bringing the trailer? Uh, I haven't booked the trailer on. No, I think no, no, you're just on. Bike. I've got a bike, uh, booked a bike on. Yeah. Mint, mint. I, t- I think oh, we should. I, f- I feel like we should be mad. Oh, oh yes, not you. Right, yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. else. I've done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just remembered. So, so, we'll, we'll have to put a shout out on the Isle of Man, won't we? <laughs> Yeah, because we can bring the gear along and do some interviews, couldn't we? What the trailer? No, no. I mean, like we could bring the mics and bring oh, the yeah, cameras yeah, yeah. over, and couldn't just we? We'll a, just say a set up studio, mm-hmm. a set up studio, like a that. roving reporter, and that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll sort of the, um, yeah, we'll get yeah. so to show yeah. out if anyone's got a spare whatever, you know, a spare room or something like that. Get so it all kitted out. I'm sure we'll sort something. So let's um, talk about snetting and then. Oh, yeah. So do, yeah. Uh, first BSB session, uh, test session kicked off last weekend. Um, so we had Friday, Saturday, Sunday for myself. Obviously it was the first time out uh, on a super bike. Um, first time out sorry, since the brands last year. So since October, uh, October, yeah. it was yeah, um, and it, yeah, it was just mega to 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 get out, to get sort of first time the whole team's been together. Um, actually, from the podcast, 
uh, like a while ago we were talking about setting things up and I put a, a sort of feelers out for, for a few people that wanted to get involved. And uh, look, well, thankfully I had loads of people get in touch with us offering various things. And uh, we've, we've got two new recruits to the, the Crow Performance team. So uh, yeah, we took a, right. a Kai and Roy and uh, they both sort of fitted in really well with the yeah, team. Yeah, and it was, well, it? yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. Um, they and, sound like proper mm. big lads with them names. So they're Scottish <laughs> or something. They're like, it's like Team Heavy and then Piggy. Yeah. <laughs> like, da 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 Piggy. <laughs> I've already got a nickname for Roy anyway. Hip Hip. Hip Hip, why is that? Hip Hip Roy. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <laughs> And also, also uh, Phil brought Marshall on, and again, Marsh uh, yeah. was an absolutely great Adam addition. Adam Marshall, yeah. Oh, that would uh, be. Oh, he's oh, easy, easy he's, led. Him. He's, oh, he's, I like him. He's easy led. He's, he's raised the male boy. <laughs> he's raised the male. Yeah, he's brilliant, brilliant on the bike, and uh, just a, another really great addition to the team. So uh, yeah, everything sort of shaping together. Yeah, everyone sort of got on it. Did it went well, didn't it? I thought, I really good, it went mega. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, obviously the we well, actually got the bike sorted that like the day on the on the way to the test so a little bit of dyno work and then um yeah just sort of had three days settled in nice and steady and just sort of chipped away uh, the thing is because it was kind of starting from scratch it's not like we've got these settings and like we know where we need to be with certain things it was really like we just went out had a few sessions to just get used to it like bedded in and then it was just a case of like we're just ch changing things and you know we lifted the rear we dropped the rear we lifted the front dropped the front tried and every test every single session we just did something different to the bike and then came back and evaluated whether it was better or worse. And um, yeah, just really, really, uh, yeah, good, good crack. By the end of the test, we ended up, um, I think it was something like 25th, something like that. Mm. I was 2.5 seconds off the fastest. And um, so, yeah, for my for my first go, I was, I was, I was um, about a second a lap faster than what I've ever been on a super stock bike. And uh, and although for some <laughs> for some people you would think going from super stock to super bike obviously it's a it's a you know better tires better the theoretically better a better that. bike yeah, yeah. 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 My, the bike I'm on at the moment is actually it's, it's still a super stock engine but that's getting uh, tuned before the first round um, so hopefully we'll have a little bit more power to come in but uh, you would think that you would find time easy but the 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 although the capability of the bike is a lot greater obviously you can push it harder and stuff the the window of where it works is like much more narrow so um it's it doesn't sound much to say oh yeah i was a second faster no. than what i was on a super stock bike but it's you know i was really chuffed to start there and um yeah just like say just sort of ch chip away and um yeah build on build on that really but not only that you like you, you haven't been on a bike they don't like you know when you compare everyone else being out in Spain uh, riding stock bikes, everyone's been out on pit bikes. You've done nothing but Mark Maths papers <laughs> I, and, I you what, and was, go around like a ride dodgy jippo in the, in this trailer. You know I was I mean? mega, it's... I was mega rusty the first first like session we went out, so we waited for the track temperature to come up. So we were like because the first day was on pit lane, so we we give it a few hours, let the track temperature come up, and then I went out and yeah, like obviously first session since October, new bike, everything was new. Um, obviously no electronics, so you've got. I've got a scooter brake instead of a foot brake, so every time Better. the bike went a wheelie, I was look, I was going for me foot, and then remembering. It. And by the end of the first day, I like, do you know when you just need a good night's sleep? And like, oh. it was, it was a little bit overwhelming to be honest, because it was just so much happening. But then I woke up like so much fresher the next day, and um, yeah, just kind of it, yeah. It, like learning stuff with the the Motec. It's uh, unreal the sort of stuff you can, the, the stuff you can do, and we're, we've literally just took like took like touch the surface like there's so much like um the capabilities of what you can do with the engine and the the split throttles and i mean obviously you'll you'll get used to working with the splits uh on your on you your bike you, i hope you're soaking this up like oh, a sponge I, I you know the laptop and I everything i unplugged it twice good lad good <laughs> but, at least you know where to plug the thing in i'm laughing in terms of the um obviously people people will be familiar with the sound of the split throttles so like when the please BM replicate getting, the noise if yeah, not like you a, piggy go on go it's on. just like go a yamaha you, sound in it like yeah but you, sort of, you hear it more on bike don't you it's yeah that sort of, go on then you know, when you hear airbox noise i don't know so I, I, do I, I re like, it, I mean, but, we've got audible listeners here people but we're, we're trying to describe a noise that they have no idea about for, for the like love a, of the no, show it's, it's not like a limiter coming in it as such it's not like you know when you rev limiter it's not like that give me a rev limiter then come on yeah like sure, when, when you get into the corners and then mm. as you pick it up it like comes up to a high pitch sound but um <laughs> go, go on go through it the way that that works is you've got uh, you split the engine into sort of two cylinders and two cylinders and you have like a primary a primary side and a secondary side and then you have a 3d graph and if you want 
basically if you want to take power out you can just pull the power out of certain rev ranges and um the difference that it makes on it's it's cool sort of seeing it on the laptop and like sort of theoretically you know we'll we'll try this and this is what it should feel like but then to go out on track and for it to to feel exactly what it looks like on the laptop it's it's unbelievably clever really really cool i had no idea you could use the split throttle on there be just because your your, your bike's got oh no no i know understand as a stocker because there is an electronic element to that so what is the bm the only bike out there with that kind of design if I, that I, makes, I, don't, you know? I don't think so I, I, yeah i'm not there I'm not, I'm not too sure i think i'm not sure it's interesting no it's interesting mm. because obviously there is an electronic system in that but yeah. you thought being bsb you wouldn't be allowed to use the that mm -hmm. you, you know what i'm getting at here then, you think yeah. it'd be like look you can't run it because no one else has I, it kind of thing you know yeah, i'm not really sure but the and on top of that <laughs> sorry for the, grassing you up if mm. that's the case oh, no, you, you, you are, <laughs> uh, uh chris you're not allowed to use that you, you are okay. definitely allowed to use this but um yeah no, just overall and in terms of the other riders that were out on track obviously there's quite a few new additions in the super bikes as well as people coming back so uh, sykes he was back out and has them Go on, you know i was about to say you haven't talked about the biggest adjustment is steroid abuse helping being a super bike rider then you know it's <laughs> <laughs> is well, it, it, no, no, because all our listeners are, you know, be racking up the gear like you are. You know, is it beneficial? You know, I've just for I'm little... not racking up any gear. There. Um, <laughs> Some else I'm supplying. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> is that where these glasses came from? <laughs> I'm obviously been yeah, like hammering the gym over the last few months, and uh, yeah, yeah, I felt I've, you always feel like when you first get on a bike, it doesn't matter how much like how many things you do in the gym it, it's like um, kind of muscle memory it's very specific muscle groups and yeah. you can sort of rep, try and replicate it in the gym but yeah I felt good um, good. good we're doing I, I tell you one thing that was quite interesting which I've never really got into and um, we'll s touch on it a little bit on the show but like not speaking from experience and that's the tyres in Superstock pr pretty much everyone uses the same compounds and it's like there's not much of a choice where in Superbikes you've got the zero rear and you've got the X rear Mm. the x is softer than the zero so it's like it's basically like zero and then like a soft and then super soft now last year pretty much all of the teams were running the x for race distance so the x came in as a qualifying tire it was introduced as a qualifying tire so you were supposed to only do a few laps on it but then the t because there were, it was a better tire it was more grippy the teams managed to just to make it. Yeah, well, mm. the teams and the riders managed to make it last for race distance and so the trade-off of going on the zero for most people it, it it was worth going on the zero and then sorry the x and then losing a bit of tire life at the end of the race but um for the i, I actually did my fastest lap at the test on a zero so like on the harder of the tires and um the i did put an x in at one point just to sort of see what it was i did put the full thing on zeros but then i did put an x in and uh it way more grip i i didn't string a lap together on it and like get a better lap time on it but the you can see the capabilities like much um for a one-off lap like it's there's a lot more grip there right um but everyone that was running the x tire was um they were getting like sort of five six laps and then they were sh absolutely sure and if you go pit lane every single out aside every single garage there was just wrecked x's and everyone was getting like five six laps out of them Jesus. so but when, no, when you think of like the financial element of that like it's like it's m crazy money that's like, what piggy makes in the morning don't sam you you were doing a good lap on X, weren't you? Yeah. But then it got there were a yellow flag out on last corner, weren't there? I think you were on a proper good lap then, weren't you? Yeah, so I think of, that yeah. I think that was that X. But, yeah. Uh -huh. But um, but yeah, it that's was just interesting, right. obviously, sort of like seeing the different things. And I think uh, your phone's just behind you, mate. There you go, Chapman. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get problems. I'll get the uh, times up, and we'll have a quick run through mm. on here. Yeah, connect to the internet. <laughs> I'll um. But it yeah, was, it, was, it was your biggest surprise. You know, if you're watching outside of playing like Chrissy in any class, who did you think is going to do what while Chrissy's looking? To be honest, I didn't get a chance to have a look at much from <laughs> apart from because we were sort of busy with by, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. Go, okay, so, okay, I tell you what, change the question slightly. Like, go we're, from we're having a chat with Matt Trull over, and he seemed happy, didn't he? He's, yeah, they're pretty. Yeah, he, he, oh, he's, he's gone to the pretty yeah, yeah, with Tom, yeah, he, Tom Ward as well. <clears> How did Ward yeah. get on? Did he like it as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, I think, so, yeah. yeah, I think they were, yeah, Matt, Matt were proper. It was, right. it's a, uh, going back to my bike, just briefly, it's a, a proper uh, beautiful bit of kit, mind. It's like really, oh. really it's got a, a suit of swinging, swinging arm, arm, which is, oh. yeah, a nice bit of kit. And uh, yeah, just with the wings and all that sort of stuff, mm. it's, it is beautiful. And I have had a sneak peek of the 
just the blue, like the blue coat and that we're getting, and then it'll be bright orange and the, the bike will look absolutely mega once it's done. I'm like well excited. And obviously once mm. I get my leathers, boots, or the full kit as well to go with it. But uh, yeah, and uh, it was the first time Croy's been sort of working on the Motec. Obviously he's really, really good on all of the BMW stuff that he's works on himself all the time. And it's pretty similar. There's lots of similarities, but he properly got stuck into it and uh, was a huge help throughout of the whole test. Um, like I said, I, I love working with Phil and because um, he's a busy lad and all. He's he's he's, he's, yeah. he's oh, still yeah, some BSB and he's done a fair. Wait, oh, wasn't he at No mm. Limits and he, he mopped up there? Is that yeah, he, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did in, in the, all the mix, didn't he? Yeah. In the sprint race, I think he mopped up there as well, mm. didn't he? No, nowhere near. Shut up, man. Uh, no, 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 nowhere near. That was a brat. No, I think he. There's somewhere he mopped up. Or am I making this up? No, no I, definitely, I think definitely I know we went, he wouldn't know. I know we went down there because he did. He said Benji Jordan, this weekend so. with you on the 250. Um, just quickly run through the time. So it was actually Jason O'Halloran who topped the the uh, the final session. Uh, right. with a, bear in mind the lap records are 47 1 and he did a 46 5. So he was under the lap record. Fastest ever superbike lap around here was shaky from years ago. He did a 46 0 yeah. in, uh, in qualifying. So How many still years ago fair. was that? Good few years. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason O'Halloran was that, fastest. Then Tom Sykes on his return to BSB after a long time in World Superbike. Uh, really cool to see him out there on the Ducati and um, from what I was told he looked really really smooth and like he wasn't scratching as well he was just gradually building in so I think Tom Sykes is going to be mega on that uh, mm -hmm. on the Ducati also Brooksy was really competitive he, he, he topped a session um, on the I think it was day two or something but or maybe day one or day two but he was straight back on it and um, under the lap record looking really good I'd also a fancy him for Championship. Yeah. I know Who's like, that? Tom lot, Sykes or Brooks? Brooks. I know a lot of right. a lot of them written him off you know, after last year and but you He's not gone shit on an eye. Well, do you know? Do you know what was interesting? We had Frank Rathall on the week before, so before any testing, and Frank Frank picked him for the for the championship. And Is I think it? most people listening to that would probably think that was an unusual pick. But then the next a few days later, he went out and like broke the lap record uh -huh. and was back on it. So yeah, I think he's going to be strong. And I missed the, out there, Bradley, Bradley Ray, Ray on, on the, the R one on the R one. Yeah, on uh, in third place again, really tight with the times and looking good. And then we're down to Rory Skinner in fifth. He did a forty six wow. seven. Uh, Skinner looked really good on track to be fair and then I think it was there was quite a big jump so there was the top let's have a look the yeah there was the, the top five so down to Skinner were pretty close and then there was a big jump to Danny Buchan in sixth but um, wasn't Danny on the first couple of days top of the timesheet yeah this is the, this is the, th the final overall isn't it yeah, all these yeah, tests right yeah. so, so like... uh, the, then there was Buchan Tara McKenzie Peter Hickman Danny Kent Tommy Bridewell and Ewan Lee Jackson Kyle Ride Ryan Vickers Christian in Dan Linfoot, Leon Haslam, Glenn Irwin, Josh Owens, Luke Mossy, Takahashi, Tom Neve, Miz uh, Mizuno, Storm Stacy, myself, and then Luke Hopkins, Dan Jones, G. Cock, Harrison, Delves, Sheldon Shaw, Hutchinson, Bjorn Esterment, James Hillier, and Sam Cox. So what, that's a thing. What's the crack with Hutchie? Because I've heard rumours that he's put himself to the moon and back so Hutchie he only did the first mm. session and he actually crashed on the first session and no. uh, yeah so stock or superbike he's down on the superbikes entry so I'm not too sure Gee. I thought he was he'll have been practicing both mm. for the getting ready for the yeah, TT yeah. won't he but yeah I think he had a little bit of a high side I think coming out of turn three and um, maybe like collarbone or something like that mm. but if, uh, um, if Philip Neal if you are listening um, I'm available <laughs> if Hutchie can't make it <laughs> there's a, there's a f uh, there was a few crashes to be fair there was <laughs> it, you know it's um yeah, it, the, over cr across the three days, I seen there was like quite a few red flags mm. and yellow flags and stuff. So, but uh, aside from that injury, I, tell I think you what, that was about it. Because Tom, Tom did his hand at Tom Neve, didn't he? Tom Neve had a little um, crash. Yeah, he's, he made a big but, step. The yeah. I think it was the second day, and then um, yeah, he's. I, I think, think he was just. I think he's all right. I think he was just. It was just hurting too much for the last day. Yeah, he did a couple right. of laps. I think didn't he? And then yeah, I think he has had which is a wise move in it if you're not right. Really. Definitely, and, and a few standout things. Uh, I was really surprised to see Haslam in seventeenth. Um, Jesus. I, 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 thought he would probably be top if i had to predict i would sort of expecting him to be sort of top five um but i'm sure he'll get that sorted uh also anyone else to like sort of danny kent did not make a time their mind Taron hmm. mckenzie's been um so after obviously his massive crash um so you know he, he'd have just been out there just sort of lapping and just like sort of taking it easy in his in his uh world but p7 for him that's uh really impressive after what 
you know, after Made the win. Made a right mess of himself, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, oh, sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, I think um, I think pr- everyone was pretty happy with the test and mm. sort of got everything that they needed to. What about stock times? Let's have a look at the... So super stock, Chris it was is like, I'm not that Tim Neve. So. Tim Neve <laughs> topped the super stock championship. Uh, let's have a look. Did find he? it here. Uh, super stock, yeah. Is that this? Is that stock six hundred? Something to be said about them Yamahas, isn't there? Let's mm-hmm. find it. Here we go. Uh, yeah, super stock. That's, That's it, what. Yeah. This is going to be the perfect so Tim, show. This because we can actually have a look at the seven people going round today at Donington Park uh, after we've looked through this. So this yeah. is perfect. Uh, Tim Neve oh. topped uh, topped the super stock session. Go on, Tim. On on the Yamaha uh, first uh, proper session on the obviously he's been out testing and stuff, mm. but first proper session. So that's running on uh, Motec this year, um, which is I think last year there was only the Aprilia. That was running on Motec, so it weren't allowed, say, traction control and stuff like that, but then they ran the same sort of setup as what BSB had. So right. Fraser Rogers was on that last year. Yeah. Now, uh, Tim Neve, I know, is definitely on that, on the Yamaha, and also Joe Francis, so the bike that I rode last year, they've changed over and they're running that on Motec as well. Right. Uh, so it's Tim, Alex Olsen, Joe Francis, Billy McConnell, who was just changed to Honda this year, uh, Brent Harron, Davey Todd, Charlie Nesbitt, who's As just David Todd's going well, mind he is, yeah, and like Charlie Nesbitt, mm-hmm. first just made, time on the on the big bikes, yeah, just made the jump over to Suzuki. Point one off Todd there, and uh, Lewis Rollo on, is out on the Honda, the Milan Cup, but had just Honda. He kept that quiet, mind didn't he? That Very just cool. appeared. Yeah, that I yeah. like, like bear in mind, you were down at the test. Mm. I, I, I hadn't a clue. They were next doors in garage, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They looked, yeah, all running well. Really, because he was, looked, he was on well, yeah, yeah, stock last year on the whose team was he on? Oh, RF. Yes, Lee Hardy's team, yeah. money. So he's gone from the Kawasaki then, over to Honda. So. After Lewis Hollow, it's David Allingham, Tom Ward, Ash Beach, uh, Sean Winfield, Levi Day, Jack Nixon, Jack's teammates uh, to Alex Olsen on the FHO bike, Braden Elliott, Richard Kerr, and then it goes into Super Sport time. So Jack Kennedy was top Super Sport. And then Ooh. going down, it was Jamie Van Sickler. Uh, Sikelarus. Am I? Am I reading it, you that see right? the Dutch lad, and then Bradley Perry was third, uh, followed by Harry Trulove, who's just joined the Appleyard McAdam team to be teammates with uh, Brad Perry. And Dean then, Harrison on a stocker. Yeah, uh, Zach Corduroy, Lee Johnson sixth, and uh, Unan McGlinchkey. Oh, is, oh, oh, <laughs> is seventh, and then Damon Rees, who's now teammates with Lee Johnson on the uh, Ashcold bike, is runs out the top eight for that. Uh, what, what, what's, you, uh, so, Dean, is Dean Harrison not on super bikes this year? D- Dean Harrison at the test was out on his. I think he was out on his stocker and his super sport bike, mm. and he was just back to backing it. Um, so he had loads, yeah, loads of riding. Yeah. Right, he's been, he's been getting well stuck in with the enduro riding over the off season. I don't know if you follow him on social media, but mm. he's he's um, Kawasaki have done him a two fifty enduro bike, I think it is. Yeah, it is. and uh, he's out on it, but he gets proper stuck in, and mm. that that enduro job is very very difficult. And he he's he rides in like the top class, not like the expert or whatever. Mm. And uh, yeah, he's really good at that. To be fair, um, Billy Bolt's won it. Mm. Uh, local lad, he's won the world endurance championship again, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's absolutely smashing it, like Billy. And uh, he's gone to Red Bull. Yes, oh. yeah, yeah, jumped across from Rockstar. So but Rockstar apparently aren't doing anything mm. anymore. Apparently, they're just covering. Supercross riders. Red Bull's not a patch on this, is Good it? Good lad, Peggy. Good <laughs> lad. There you go. He's having my job here. Brand ambassador for Rich Energy. Good lad, so Good lad. So, um, sorry, quickly going back. So, Jack Kennedy. Uh, Bradley Perry was had him for the first couple of days. Is that correct? Yeah, that, so the Apple Yard team actually packed up and uh, shot off, off for the last day just because the forecast wasn't too good. So, up till that point... Uh, Bradley Perry was actually fastest when everyone was out on track, but then the other two went a little bit faster on this Sunday. Who was your mate who works for Apple Yard? Nice lad. <laughs> I was just saying that because he's sat in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nose ring. Corner. Looks a bit dodgy. Aye, yeah, that, that <laughs> fella. He's he, a top lad. And, and, and just a shout out to Josh. He's been a uh, huge help to me recently with all of the um, the design work, you no, know, for the the garage boarding. Uh, we've get, we've been getting that sorted. So I've been uh, taking up a lot of his time. He probably hate every time the phone goes and he sees it's me. He's probably like, oh, not again. <laughs> I but, can uh, confirm that because when he's not in front of your face, he's like, uh, bloody Chrissy. He's been very good. Yeah, bloody been Chrissy. Go, go over for an hour doors and get stuck in and get uh, loads of <laughs> loads of work done and it, yeah he's been a huge help so uh, yeah massive and while we're on the roll of shout outs he Josh did throw a uh, knuckle duster at us what's all this about <laughs> I, the, the, to <laughs> this, this a bottle open a pick piece been trying to open a bottle of beer with it for ages do you know this it, this this is nothing to do with Josh to be fair but uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, chuck him under the bus there <laughs> but um, yeah so a company called Olito 
on uh, Instagram got in touch with us and just basically just said they'll send us one over there. And uh, it's a, for people that aren't watching YouTube, just on the audio, it's basically just like a sculpture of a motorcycle. But well, it, comes, it could be a paperweight. It, it looks like different a, colours. It, look, it yeah, looks like a, a melted down mug. It's a, it's the a handles there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, looks, it like looks it's unique. Yeah, I like it. They have not, they're not like it, it's not a sponsor or anything. They've literally just sent us one, and I just thought it was really nice. So I've uh, brought it in the studio just to show people. But uh, yeah, they it's, they're on Instagram. Designed and, and developed in the Isle of Man. Yeah, came over Ooh. from the Isle of Man, and I've got to give them a shout out. Right, twelve plus. I better put it down. The... <laughs> <laughs> do you know the? Do you know when you get some like a ornament like that yeah. in a in a packaged box? So usually you just like wrap them in bubble wrap and stuff. I've never seen anything like this. So it, it was like fit fitted perfectly into this uh, little box with it, like all the things cut out. And then they'd went round and glued like micro bits of foam on all of the edges. So it like sits in like a, like really, really cool, um, beautiful little, I suppose it would be like a good present for someone that's into bikes and like mm. just, it's like a monument type of thing. Uh, but yeah, it's very nice. And so I just thought I would bring it in and drop them a little uh, a plug and, um, Ideal. On the on the. Can, can I keep it? It's my colour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go on, Piggy. I said they do uh, like different colours, you know. Yep, all different colours. They all, they're all that design, they but the like that shade, yeah. but then loads of different colours. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're really good. They did like if they did team branding and stuff like that, you could have. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need team colours. I, I, I could literally spend this full podcast just doing plugs because uh, obviously <laughs> with setting the team up over the last few months and then just getting everything to, to BSB, you know, it, the amount of people that have been um, helping us out have been like absolutely crazy and I'm incredibly humbled and uh, grateful for everyone that has been helping out. But uh, just a, a <laughs> just a few quick ones. Uh, when I Just before I went down to the test, our, our joint friend, Mark from Mac Tools Newcastle, uh, sorted us out with an absolute absolutely mega toolbox oh, and for anyone that uh, has been on my social media it's like the riding graphics did a big uh, thing for it and it looked absolutely amazing so um yeah mind you i've out. got one problem with that go on they put the wrong person on it it <laughs> should be piggy's face <laughs> and it, you know what i mean because you're not going to go near it it's him uh, that's it no. speak, speaking of tools Imagine so that, yeah, no, uh, nobody would rob it would they <laughs> It is a proper trick bit of kit, though. Oh, it's it lovely, yeah. And uh, speaking of tools, the, now they don't want to be named uh, personally, but they they are patrons of ours, um, and they've just set a, set a business up called the Power Tool Hub Company and uh, Power Tools Hub, yeah, on Instagram. And uh, they met us down at Snedden, uh, yeah, and on Saturday, it yeah. was like full on, like sort of tool porn one at the oh. the Penwell Power Tools full kit of uh, proper top of the range power tools oh, uh, Milwaukee stuff is that where all that Milwaukee gear came from that yeah it's beautiful. really good really really yeah so um, again um, absolute massive shout out to like I say they don't want to be named yeah. personally but massive shout out to them for that because uh, yeah it's absolutely incredible but yeah so if you loads... see Piggy in the back polishing something it's, yeah, it's his big impact like, gun yeah. Yeah. Lo <laughs> loads, of, loads of like little bits and bobs sort of coming yeah. together and um, it's especially I mean, you must be the same the last sort of couple of weeks before the season running oh. around the country me getting everything sorted have uh, are you getting everything sorted for your big bike um it should be turning up next week right it's so cutting, I, cutting it a bit fine and my giddy hand man you know it's it's oh i'll be we'll talk about it once i've got it you know what i mean i just don't want to jinx the job i'm just sitting here going well, i've ordered this i've ordered that i've done this and like, like you say chrissy the, the sponsors list i think we're gonna actually have a, an episode dedicated just to actually <laughs> i don't think it'll get many views but it'll get like a lot of people just sitting there just talking about absolutely everyone because the list is endless absolutely endless but there we go i tell you what though he is the only sponsored mechanic that i know are you still sponsored by needham's motorcycles uh, yeah yeah the only... i've not seen him for a bit actually you better get the money in so yeah, don't you? Go and see him. we've got a bike to mot so i'll be taking him <laughs> yeah i've not seen him for about uh, three weeks something like that right okay. there you go now um the no this weekend coming we're, we're yeah. on a thursday at the moment this weekend coming is there's no world super bikes there's MotoGP oh, coming up. Yeah, Argentina. Big yeah. news that Marquez, as after that huge monster high side that he had the other day, unbelievable. That was it? apparently off throttle, you know. Right. Is that correct? Someone correct me if I'm wrong there. I don't know. Oh, Someone was telling me, well, you know what the you know what the paddock, the rumor mills like, don't you? In the paddock, right, you know what I mean. Yeah. So by the time you end up walking through it, everyone was saying he was off throttle when that high side kicked in. 
Right. So it, it looks like on, 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 on throttle, but it, 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 that's what I mean. But, um, uh, yeah, Monster High side, disgust. and obviously he's had problems with his eye for a while, and um, he was out for a long time with no, that eye. Cheers, it, 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 Cheers is it, mate. Is it like a blur, blurred thing, or is it like a blinding thing? Or it's it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's an injury to do with his eyesight, mm. and that massive crash uh, has re-triggered it. So he's going to be missing the the following Grand Prix. Uh, so anyone that's in my fantasy league, uh, if you've got Marquez, I would strongly advise you to switch him before this weekend because he'll. Definitely Definitely be scoring no points. By the way, I had a um, the last no the last Grand Prix. Do you know I was kind of taking the mick out of myself because I'd done terrible on the first round. Yeah, I was like almost last in the fantasy league. So uh, the following round, I had I've got Binder, I've got Oliveira, uh, Zarco. So I had two of them on the podium. Then uh, I'm back up like mid pack <laughs> now. I think I'm into the seventies, something like that. But and I've also changed. Who did I change? I had someone I can't remember. Had someone that was doing really rubbish for us. Oh, um, oh, I can't. I'll have to think of them. They, they were like, uh, oh, Vinales. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mav. I've I've switched Mav. By the way, have either of you been watching the Amazon Prime thing? No, I I, I've heard. Do you know what I've heard? Loads. We're, we're of, at, he's yeah. doing slabs and I'm felling trees. So, <laughs> <Yeah. they can. laughs> so a lot of people that are listening to this will have will have uh, started watching it. But it's over on Amazon Prime. I think it's called Unlimited. Is that right, Josh? Yeah, uh, Unlimited and. Uh, Josh is like our guru from air. What do you call it? <laughs> yeah. Joe Rogan yeah. show, isn't it? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Check and that it, up, Jamie. Uh, check, <laughs> check that up, my man. There you go. Can, can uh, you find out if that was off throttle on that high side? Because uh, I'm determined to get one over on these two. There yeah, you if, you, if you go on um, it's Amazon Prime and check it out, Unlimited, it's basically behind the scenes. And uh, there was a massive thing on Netflix, uh, Drive to Survive, which revitalized Formula One, got loads of new fans into the sport. And th- this is kind of like an attempt to do the same sort of thing. But from everyone that I know that's watched it, they've said it's absolutely amazing. The co- you can't believe like the conversations you get a hearing on uh, some like really sort of juicy gossip and bits that happen like behind wow. the scenes <laughs> and you get I bet you, you you feel like you get to know the riders a lot more um, so I'd, at, I'm mega busy at the moment but at some point I would quite like to to start watching that and that's mm. just on Amazon well, yeah it's on Amazon Prime yeah shit my, um, my no, BBC. I know it's like Netflix. You know, only one person buys the account, and oh. then you hop on that. Don't you? I need to find some Amazon account. Just yeah. a little uh, update as well. Do you know, chasing the championship, which has been oh, yeah. in the making from uh, for years. Yeah, David, I'm willing to. That's been submitted for Amazon Prime, so we're just waiting to see if it gets accepted. So I'm hoping that's going to be out there. Some some Netflix. No, that is worth watching. That it is. There you yeah. are. But that's because you're in it. So well, yeah. there you go. You see, you that's like a selling point. That's you like exactly. a star and roll in it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You've got to watch it right till end, though. It was quite funny, you know, when I went over to the, uh, the the France thing and like taking question and answers, and like oh. French people, I like, can hardly speak English, asking about uh, piggy. <laughs> 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 it was very funny. I should have gone, shouldn't I? I know. <laughs> <laughs> they lost the auctionman in the middle of Nice. Oh. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> Why don't Frenchmen Here we go with this. have two eggs for breakfast? Because one egg is enough. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible. Absolutely oh my god. Do you know what? Everyone tuned in to watch this has been waiting for the piggy joke and they're gonna be gutted by that. You better have some more. You better have some more, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. There's there's a couple of corkers off air before we started, but we definitely not. Oh uh, yeah, you can't, can't, yeah. You would keep them off. Yeah. Um it's... One, one were true. <laughs> <laughs> in, in terms of uh, some more GPs on this weekend, uh, where's it at? Argentina. I have a clue. Um, I'm not. We'll have to. Sort of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is Argentina. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Yeah. Here yeah. we go. We've we'll got in the corner. <laughs> and then uh, World Superbikes doesn't kick off for a few it's, weekends, does yeah, it? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that sort of settles in. Have you seen any of the testing times for World Superbikes? No, me and me and Piggy no. come on the show to learn from you, yeah. mate. Right, so well, uh, since Bautista's went back to Ducati from yeah. Honda, he, he seems to like really um, revitalised himself, and people are talking about him as a sort of an outside bet for the championship this year, we which did. he would never, he was never close to on the Honda. Um, so it'll be possibly it'll be interesting mm. to have him back in the mix of things. Also, uh, I think Scott Redden's not been like right at the front on the BMW. Uh, did he have a problem with his? Did he have an injury to something to do with his spine or something? I think he was struggling for his wife. Did, a vertebrae yeah. thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think he was uh, started off the testing a little bit injured, but mm. obviously it's a big, big change and it'll take a bit of time yeah. to adapt. Yeah. And also, a teammate, uh, Michael van der Marx, had a huge accident uh, on his mountain bike, snapped his leg. I think it was a leg, leg snap, wasn't it? Jesus. He's, had, he's had a serious injury anyway. It's on, if you check out his Instagram, and uh, so he's going to be out for 
a while out of out of thought as well. So, yeah, it's one mm. of them things that, you know. Ever when the season starts, everyone's so keen because you've you've had that sort of that ner- like the tension building up for months and months and months, and then you like get to the season. But it's re- it's really important just to like bed in nice and easy and like you know slowly mm. slowly catch your monkey because you can on the first day of the new season you can span yourself can't you I know yeah, he, yeah. I'm not speaking about Vandermark there I'm just saying in general yeah, just, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah you've just got to be so careful so okay. the whole club Chris. racing scene's been kicked off for a good few weeks now obviously you mentioned the North East meeting also the Bemsey were out at uh, Brands Hatch a couple of weeks ago yeah. No Limits had the first round at mm. Silverstone and then Bemsey are back out at Silverstone as well you're going to have to give Daniel Sam a shout out he was winning the rookie races by a country mile yeah, and then he got out. taken out by all accounts he did uh, and he's been uh, injured quite quite severely so if, you, so if you listen to this Sam unlucky son uh, <laughs> simple as that shout simple out, as that shout out to him I tell you what though um, you know who I'm over the moon with at the BSB the king of testing himself Jason O'Halloran you know when you just read uh, through that list there he's always he is the king of testing isn't he mm. so let's just hope he breaks breaks the habit this year mm. God I tell you, who's your who's your top list what for Superbike, yeah. I I don't think Brooks. Brooks, I do honestly. Yeah. Who's second? You can never rule out the Yamahas, can you? No, no. There's four of them now as well. He did say a Sykes. Mm, I think Sykes is going to be up there <laughs> more, more so than Aslam. I think. Right. Uh, and like I say, you, you can't like rule out a Wallen and. and Mm, I mean, I, I think that, that'd be me three. I think I tell I tell you one thing from being out on track, which was kind of nice because it hasn't happened for a, for a while. Is do you know when you're in a class where there's like people are doing things that there's sometimes in superstock like you'll be out and someone might pass you, but you can sort of see that they've they've maybe just got like a slightly better setting and you, they're making like a tiny bit here and a tiny bit. You're basically doing the same, but they're just getting a little bit better, a little bit better time. It was like humbling to be out on track to see see people doing stuff with the bike and like thinking to yourself like some t- at some t- point in the near future I'll be able to do something like that. Mm. But at the moment to be to it's like having your eyes open of like how how much you can push the bike, push the tires, and um, it's like I say it's humbling really to sort of see it on track. Mm. Um, and it's yeah, it's pretty amazing to be fair. There was a few few people that passed us, and I just thought, wow, that looked like that is incredible. Uh, Given when Freddie Spencer first came on scene, yeah, well, not uh, well, uh, yeah, well, well, I, mean, like, yeah. I mean, you were a young lad, weren't you? Well, he's, uh, yeah. he's 18 when he's in them days, yeah, it were young. And I think get with Kenny Roberts, and he also when they first started smoking back tyres and what have you. And Kenny Roberts once said that Freddie Spencer had passed him, and both his tyres were smoking. As as, he, as Spencer had passed Kenny Roberts, and he said, "Thought bloody hell, like, yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> so it just shows it's you know whatever level you're at, there's always there's always a rabbit to chase, isn't mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. Especially in this game, my god, yeah, yeah. Go on then. No, so, I, okay, so we got. I want to know, like, I tell you what, Lee Hardy, he's he's chucked all his eggs in the one basket this year, hasn't he? You only know think about because I have not seen his name on the TT list. You know when no, you look for no, like you uh, can see yeah. the numbers, so he's not doing the roads where he's always been a roads man, even mm. at the northwest and stuff. I tell you, there's a name I didn't see. Yeah, well, Derek McGee, he's always been a front runner at the TT. He's not there this year. Mm. There's you know no. if you look between the cracks, there's a few people moving things round. Like mm. you know what I mean? Tell you what, get mm. a bit of an inside scoop on um, on British Supersport. We've got Josh is working for um, for Bradley Pirrie this year. And things. Do you, want to ju- do you want to jump in for a quick chat? Come on, jump in. Yes, go on, jump in the deep end. But, uh, behind the when scenes. When you get actually. some headphones, I'll tell you what you're going to do. No, yeah, no, it's all good. We'll just use them. Um, so, I actually used to race with Josh back in uh, 2000. And... He's sorting himself out here. Yeah, look at him. This is my moment. Here we are. I'm sick of being on the laptop. <laughs> um, I tell you what, just while we're the um, podcast downloads have been doing mega recently, Piggy. We've been. Uh, They're the, going to get over, better now. Over the last few months, the. the um, it's like crit- yeah, really, really cool. Like um, <laughs> he's ready. Uh, good. Um, I yeah, mean, me and Josh used to race back in two thousand and nine. So when we were first kids on the on the tarmac, and uh, Josh is still involved with the racing now. But as a so he spanned for Jack Kennedy, who won the British Super Sport Championship last year, and um, back with the Appleyard team and with Brad Perry. So uh, I yeah, I'll move them. Mike, the mic will be fine there in the middle of your service. Yeah. You may have to scooch in for the <laughs> your big shot though. Your big shot. There you go. Get cosy. I tell, you, 
that's it. I'll tell you what we went. Um, me and Josh. This is another plug. Come by the way. Me and Josh went down uh, yesterday. So I've been very kindly sp- sponsored a coffee machine. Proper proper like trick thing coffee machine from a company called Ficino down based in Birmingham set like pretty much center of Birmingham and uh, basically I was I, it was actually at the Scarborough fundraiser night I uh, got to speak to a guy there called Andy from Espresso's uh, Espresso Services North and um, he put us in touch with Adrian Maxwell and I went down and uh, met the guy Josh was with us yesterday we had a full tour of the factory and uh, he's very kindly sponsored our our team uh, a coffee machine for the year so absolutely buzzing about that but honestly mate from a you know if you're like in like engineering and stuff like you are it was <laughs> unreal like the factory massive thing that make every it's made in britain every single part of that part the whole coffee machine is manufactured in-house the uh, like huge production lines and uh the exporting all around the world and, like it was just it was absolutely amazing i want to i can't wait to yeah, try it it was really impressive wasn't it it was the, really good you'll find it weird listening to your voice through the thing <laughs> you, you soon get used to it i've um but I uh, inside scoop on so British Super Sport this year. Who's the the is it Dutch lad? The one that was P two Van Sigleris. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he said that before. It, <laughs> yeah. oh, straight off the tongue there. He's actually been around a few years. I think he did World Super Sport. Right. And um, and then he's actually been in BSB for a couple of years. I think. Nice. I did hear a rumor. I don't know if it's true, but I'll say it anyway. Good lad. That he actually had um, he had surgery. Had his legs broken, so his toes always used to stick off. And he used to gr- grind his toes on the floor. There was an issue. And about a year ago, he had surgery to have his legs straightened. And that's what he puts down to being a bit um, sort of steady, I would say, over the last couple of years. And now he's feeling good and that's fit again. Yeah. Wow. Because he's, um, like I say, to, you, you used to see him like the likes of Piri and that's, Jack Kennedy. That's what to me, that. I used to grind my... I was six foot three, mate. <laughs> and they've like slowly ground down. <laughs> Is um, <laughs> the wonderful word of working for Christopher <laughs> Ralph say go straight Do you know what I mean? You, you used to see him the likes of Kennedy and uh, um, yeah, the, the usuals up there. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see another name in the mix. Also, Lee Johnson was uh, like from the last few years, he's always been sort of top three, top four. He was a little bit steadier, maybe just sort of bedding in nice and you know steady for yeah, start of the season. I don't know what he's done riding you know, like off season. I don't I, know. Um, I'm he actually going in... to see him later on today, so I'll we'll find yeah. out. But um, Damo Reese has went from super stock to to being teammates in super sport with Lee, so he'll yeah. have a have a teammate out there. What happened to Shane Rich- Shane Richardson? Them two seem like um, he's gone to six hundred as well, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, she, uh, he's just had a big crash actually out oh, in Gua- uh, Squadix, I think it was, but they went out for a t- test over in or Alcaraz or somewhere. They went out on the Triumphs and uh, he's teammates with um, Reese Irwin. Reese has jumped oh, over right, the yeah, Triumph on the 765. And Josh um, Day is riding one of them as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's for the Astro J- James Jackson racing team. So um, they're, one yeah. of the, they're one of the mental people that are at Donington Day, uh, Donington Day aren't they? We've seen oh, them right. this morning. I, we, I'll, I'll be, that, we've been watching you staring at your phone in the corner there, so we'll <laughs> have to pull that up soon. So Has there been any live timing on so far? I don't know, it was on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> There was a lot of swiping anyway. <laughs> a lot of swiping. At least, at go. least you're honest. <laughs> if you go around the local area going, I'm best mates with Piggy. They'll be like, oh. To be honest, to be honest I'm surprised he's still got a thumb after the last two days I've been with him. <laughs> Isn't it ground it? Speaking about grounding his feet, uh, feet down, I think Josh is going to have half a thumb soon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I kind of think <laughs> he's like I'm not denying it. Yeah, that's straight yeah. off the bat. Oh, straight off the bat. Uh, <laughs> but you've been out of Spain testing with the team. Good, good. I mean, that team's been so successful in in Super Sport. They've won four titles back to back. Last year was yeah. the first time that they haven't won. Um, and just doing another year with Piri, I think I think it's looking like it's going to be a good season for you. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, he was really quick early on. So he doesn't do any riding in the winter. He never rode any off road bikes or anything. Um, First time he rode the bike was when we went to, so we went to Almeria. There's two tracks there. There's the is it Andalusia, yeah, and then Almeria. Two days at one, two days at the other, and um, yeah, like he seems to have. Um, so I've known Brad for years when we did mini bikes and stuff. Uh, you have obviously had him on your podcast and stuff, but he seems to have like come of age a little bit this year. He seems a little bit more grown up. Um, he's had a year of kind of figuring out what he needs to do to run at the front. I think like a lot of people maybe seen him uh you know he went from running his own sort of squad with his dad getting onto a bike and a team that are sort of three times well four times british champions mm. and uh, that can be like also like a blocker as well if you don't really know kind of how to how to go on with that and stuff so he's had his kind of year of i mean he won seven races last year kennedy only well kennedy won i say only won seven races as well so 
Uh, I think he's definitely in with a shout. Um, he's actually really impressive um, to work with and stuff as well. So Are you saying it's like feedback and that's really good? Yeah, he's really good. Really nice uh, sort of... The only problem is he doesn't know how to make tea. Four days in Spain, he never made one cup of tea. So oh, it's, it's oh, my only complaint oh, 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 about you're, you're on the bike working with uh, Brad Jones's dad, Tim. Tim Jones, yeah. And uh, how's Brad doing? I would. It would be really great to get him on the show, actually. For yeah, I'm sure we'd love it, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, he came out to Spain with her. Yeah, he, um, he's uh, yes. I think like he's you know he's getting there. I think body wise is pretty good. He's still got a way to go with some other things, but he was sort of jogging to the circuit and stuff from the not quite the hotel, but halfway. Uh, he jumped out of the car and he was uh, jogging to the circuit and stuff and he was out helping helping the lads sort of spotting really and going around the track and taking videos and stuff like that and stuff. So I don't know if he's going to, what his involvement's going to be this year, but obviously it's been really nice to have him around again. So Fair play, I can barely run a bath, never mind from the track from the hotel, <laughs> but it's a, RST did a fantastic documentary yeah. on him, didn't yeah, they? And that, seen that. that is good, that mind. It just shows his character, mm. 100%. But no, if you can tap him up to get him on the show, that'll be, that'll be grand. That'll be absolutely grand. I was going to say, did you see that, but you're not on no. any social media. Are you? <laughs> just just, 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 just no. Tinder. Just t- Tinder, yeah. T- yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There's a, blo- there's right, a blonde wig. Thanks right? for your password. I don't know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Go on. The, now I asked Piggy the same question. What's your outside bet? Then? I thought you were going to say so. What? <laughs> what's, yeah, so yeah. what's your password? What's, yeah. no, <laughs> what's your password? Sure. What's then? the best location in the UK? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, uh, I for uh, we talking super bikes, super bike, super sport. I want the lot. Nice. Uh, I think you'd be daft to rule out the likes of Haslam and um, Sykes and obviously Brooks. They're going to be competitive, aren't they? I actually really think Brad Ray could ha- has got a real shout. He's on good bikes. Um, not that they weren't good before, but the Yamaha's obviously won a championship, hasn't it? Um, yeah, and I, I don't know. He looked really strong the first few days at Snetterden, didn't he? I think probably a lot of people aren't talking about McKenzie, which I think is a mistake. I think he's just mm. he's injured, right? Yeah, he's yeah, going to yeah. come there, and the showdown format will probably support him this year. Uh, it's really hard to pick one person. I'll, I'll go for Brad Ray. Uh, is a is a kind of outside bet, I think, um, for winning the championship. And then it's hard to kind of say in super sport. I think uh, it's going to be, uh, it, yeah, you, you wouldn't rule out Kennedy because he's just, you know, he you know what he's done over the last few years. He can sort of ride anything, really. Um, he's on a good bike this year. Um, but I really think Perry's going to give him a run for his money. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so I would say especially that. Especially with you on the Spanners, yeah. just making, that, that's <laughs> making the difference. <laughs> that's it. And what, and what's, is there a reason why he doesn't do any training in the window? He just doesn't, does he do not feel the need? Is, or? He, he made a really good point. He was like, you know, you give all your season, like your entire life just evolves around it, doesn't it? He goes, it's actually nice to just get away from it. I that kind of sp- makes sense, I think. I yeah. remember speaking to you, when we first started the pods, that's what you, you know, straight off the bat, you were saying that, you know, mm. you, you just like, you want, you want a break from it. And like yeah. Brad's obviously doing that and it's, it's definitely sure it doesn't make any slower. My giddy no. no, far from it. I mean, yeah, I, obviously, the, when we went to Spain, you know, those tracks were tracks he'd never been to before. And, um, it, it, you know, he was quick straight away. Like, I, I think Harry True Love as well. I've, I didn't really know Harry before um, being in the team, but he's a, a great lad. His family are fantastic as well. And um, he was he was really quick straight away. Obviously, he's got experience of the Yamaha. So I think for him, it's going to be nice having the kind of... Um, this the infrastructure around him, really, the team and mm. and you know, the experience of Gary and, yes, and Alex. Yeah, it's nice, nice lad, Harry. He's a lovely yeah, lad, yeah. isn't he? Oh, it's sound. Mm. I've um, uh, I'll, sh- I'll grab the Patreon questions because I, I haven't actually mentioned the fact you're, you were coming on because it was unexpected. <laughs> but uh, we'll have some ones for <laughs> for Piggy. Um, first one is from Paul Watson, which is uh, an Isle of Man resident. Yes, and a good friend of ours. In this photo, has Piggy got three nipples? I, don't, I haven't pre-read these, by the way. Uh, Piggy like bon, pre- bomb themed mm, villain show, isn't it? <laughs> Pre- Piggy's prediction for the TT and where does he like to watch if he isn't too busy? So, prediction for the TT. Oh, f- oh. F- on big bikes, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dom. <laughs> no, um, Portiest. <laughs> it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because it's uh, no, you've not nobody's been over this, so it's no. Mm. So that's going to play. I think into McGuinness a bit, and he's he's away early. He's at number one, isn't he? So on a new bike. But yeah. He hasn't ridden it all. Yeah. Like, bear in mind that. Well, John hasn't done a lot on a big bike. Period. No. At the minute, he's no. done a bit with Hawk Grace and like round Darley Moor and stuff like that, but he's not actually. Jumping in the deep end, like unlike Hutchie and obviously Hickman and Harrison, yeah, you know, they're just got, they're balls deep in it, aren't they? So, like I say, you can't go against Dicky really, Hickman, can you? You can't. And, that's the thing. Hickman's like say, just Hickman, the bar, and he. Mm-hmm. 100%. I mean, I think Mickey D on Ducati. You know what I mean? He's gonna be. 
I'm a big Mickey D fan, I know. So I, it's. I think everyone in road racing is, and I think it's it's one of those because he never actually gets that entitled. Not one year's gone by where everyone says he's going to win it because mm. they've always played him off against Dunlop. It's always been Hutchie versus Dunlop, Dean Harrison yeah, versus yeah. Dunlop. It's always been the Dunlop element, but he's never been written off. But he's never been, as far as I can remember, going to the TD. He's never been. This is Dunlop's year. And that's, I'm, that's I'm, how I'm, I see it anyway. I, I'm but he always go, does deliver. I'm going to go Mickey Dunlop, I think. Yeah. For, for me, there's, I, I think there's a top four, but the chance of them, one of them, either DNFing yeah. or having a problem is high. So it, like, I think the four people that have got a, a strong chance of being on the podium is um, Hick, Hickman, yeah. Dean Harrison, Michael Dunlop, yeah. David Todd. Yeah, David Todd. I think he'll go yeah. well this year. And David I, Todd I will think go that well. I think there'll be a jump, and then from then I think it's like sort of because Yeah, right. Um, and then like, how is Hillier going to get on? And David Johnson on the Yamahas? They could work really good. They could be difficult. Yeah, uh, there's a few sort of questions after that. You've got Derek Shields, aren't you? And, and McGuinness. Here's yeah. a question: Out of the OMG lads, who would you put first and second? Hillier on the big bike. On, on the big bike. Um, now, ah, here we go. I'd love to see Dave who win. Oh, God, I 100%. They're both lovely lads. Like. I'd like to be no. at the party afterwards. Oh, God. Oh, he's, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. he's mental. No, but no, it's interesting because what, like, the reason I'm asking that is James Hillier, hell of a pilot, period. But he's always been on the Kawasaki. And the reason I'm basing this theory on is because he's always been on one bike and he hasn't had a change. Dave or Johnson literally is like the jack of all trades. And he just hops on, he goes from Norton to BM yeah, yeah. to Honda to this. And he. He has no preference, as far as I'm aware. He just gets on a bike and goes. And I think this Yamaha change is going to potentially benefit Devo more rather than James Hillier. But I've been wrong That's many a time, and I'll get keep proving wrong. I've, by the way, I've just worked out the the third nipple thing. It's uh, the pictures. <laughs> you know, when you had <laughs> it's been on my mind. When you had Storm's hat on that one. Ah right, it's yeah, a, yeah, it's a good picture to be fair. But um, yeah. oh, yeah. the third nipple thing's the pass you had your uh, paddock pass yeah. on, so it yeah. does look like a third nipple. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just to clarify, Piggy's only got two nipples. Uh, <laughs> um, Favourite place to watch, Ghostly. That goes where that. Really? I, uh, uh, it were Phil Meller that said to stand there, sort of thing. To you? So, uh, to my mate. Right. That would be like in eighteen because he, he sort of knew him just through my mate with club racing. Yeah. And he got to, he sort of knew him through all that, and we used to go there when. Before Tinternet and what have you, and there were literally us. We could sit on that grass. I've even stood on, you know, on that video with Joey Dunlop. Mm. It comes out to go sleep, and he says there's a bale always sticks out here. I've stood like on that bale, which could do then. I mean, there were no no restrictions, so I've always gone. I mean, now you go, and if you're not there two hours before the race, you can't get a seat. That wall's rammed, mm. and we used to go and there'd be like three or four people on that wall. Right. D um. I'm, I feel like I'm robbing you of your Isle of Man now. No, no, being serious. <laughs> no, no, you know, no, you know what I mean, though? It's a bit Stuck like... Stuck in the pits. Yeah. That's yeah. A bit, you see, the, the stock race, you're not allowed to do a wheel change this year. Yeah. Which is brilliant. So you have to do the four laps on the same tyre. I think that's going to make it really consistent. Oh, can I go and then once it. you've set up? No, can I go? I'm not being serious. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You know, we'll have the little bikes. I'm, I've just... I, I feel like... But, oh, I've got to ask a question. Who's better to work for, me or him? <laughs> Depends you what see, eat, now to be fair, you see a lot less of me, but I'm better in small uh, doses. Then he's got a coffee machine now. Yeah, he's got a coffee machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shite. <laughs> have to get mm. your finger out, Dom. Um, so <laughs> rich energy, I can get you a, a scary amount of that. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> One from uh, Sam Higginson. It was brilliant meeting Piggy at the London show. Lovely to chat bikes and spa uh, span a twirling with him. Will he be helping Dom out this year too, or just focusing on the BSB? So Van said that one, and... Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. It, was, it was good to see Sam uh, down there. Yeah. He's, he's a cell, he's yeah. sex cells. We need we need well, him out the front, <laughs> you know, luring them in. Yeah, it's... Uh, it was good at show, weren't it? I enjoyed it. Actually. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, you, you and Danielle out there pulling pulling, uh, the, pulling, pulling punters the punters in. in. That's That's Danielle yeah. bodyguarding you. Yeah. Get off him. Get off him. <laughs> 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 right, it was good. It was good. It was good for a few days, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> All these women so checking Tinder for a, you like that. I've got a question for you, actually. Oh God. Um, you know. The how all of the there's quite a few top lads at the TT now who are doing like full time British Championship rides and like Hickman especially is performing kind of in both. Do you think that in the next few years, uh, in order to go to the next level at the TT, you'll need to be doing that? Do you think because they raised the level so much because 100%. of that? Hundred percent. I, 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 yeah, I couldn't agree more. And it's because it, I think even visually, like 
things that you, even when you watch them now and i don't know if it's because the bikes have moved on or whatever but they just look even more on the limit now don't they than they ever have done before there was like a visual i don't know whether what year it was like say 16 or something when hickman went on the dm and it even like visually looked like a level above the, you know, wow. it's, like, I, I completely agree and it's um i think it's more I, there's more accessibility to it because when you think back in like the 80s and stuff like the carl fogarty days mm. and the steve hislop days they were leaps and bounds of everyone they were world level yeah. you know they were championship winning and everything and that riding is always transferred through even Halewood, you know he used to do like short circuits back in the day i was going to say that is a very fair point because you in terms of world level short circuit riders you wouldn't like you know like if you compared say hickman to like happen, marquez or uh, to one of the top in the world he's he's like quite a considerable amount off but it's mad to think like the, that class of rider used to do the tt yeah but that, that's the thing but you look at them um, Joey Dunlop he's won mm. world championships you know and even when he first started racing people almost, because he's 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 the world's greatest road racer they've almost avenued him into the fact that he re they don't really label him as a short circuit rider no. he was a phenomenal short circuit rider and he understand that that skill development mm. and we it just feels like it's coming back doesn't it I mean yeah. even McGuinness what like 10 years ago would have been doing full-time super stock thousand or super sport or something Hutchie was doing super sport yeah and it just feels like all oh, that's kind of coming back now. That you can do full time British Championship and still go to the TT. Like Brooks, I know he's not there this year, but a hundred percent agree. With, sorry, mate. Like a hundred percent agree with you. The fact that it kind of the TT has always had a pattern. Unfortunately, it always mm. goes up in popularity, then it dips a little bit, and it's all about the clat, like the, the fall and rise of it. And like John and Michael Dunlop and stuff, you know, they stayed away from the shorts, but then they were so dominant on the road that they they became them. Yeah. Short, do I dare say it? The road specialist kind of thing. But I totally agree with you. You know, in order for me to be consistently fighting for fighting for podiums, you do need to be a British. Yeah. But unfortunately, I don't have a pot to piss in. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. And it's um, that that next yeah. step would be crucial. But like you say, it's there is going to be a turn of the tide. There is going to be a changing of the guard, and that's in any sport and any walk of life. There is going to be that change of pattern, and you have to be you have to be at the door knocking on it to. Do that, but great shout about Davy Todd, mind, because he is not. But look, where was he fifth in stock there? Like that, yeah. You know, he's he's putting his money where his mouth is. He's getting the time, and Clive believes in him, mm -hmm. and Clive in in invites confidence. Mm -hmm. Certainly, put a pageant yeah. shirt on. Yeah, I think it's three mile an hour quick around the island yeah. mad period solely because of your sheer belief. And I think, yeah, yeah I think he'll have a good year. I yeah. think he will because yeah. they know what they're doing, don't? Of course they do. You know what I mean? You can put the back wheel in the front, the front, and the back again. You'll win on that. All right, class, no problem. Off you go. Yeah. Mm. Um, Drew Williams, um, any good jokes? Still laughing about the back joke with the bag of cement. There's one that we edited out of the yeah, show I before. Think that, leave it in later, yeah. <laughs> Have you got any others? <laughs> No, no, so no. Come, and Josh had a proper rude we'll one come, that we had uh, <laughs> as well. You're right, dirty bugger. We'll come back. We'll come back. Hey, can, could you poke your head through there, Josh? <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, pick, <laughs> He's bad. This, this is me this this is mega impressive, right? Uh, Piggy, this is Piggy's party trick, and I've never seen one other person in the world do this in person, right? Piggy can get his full fist in his mouth. Huh? I've heard about this. Yeah, I've never seen were well impressed, right? Really, come on, uh, straight in. You can hear it move, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it on the mic. That's rough as <laughs> Yeah, but it does go in. I'm not yeah. trying to end that. Yeah, yeah. You, you hit your gag reflex yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> it would be on my teeth. Chris, he showed you his party trick. You have a party trick. I, I've shown you the uh, the bottle. The pint, oh, yeah, the pint yeah, thing yeah. that is. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's when we were doing it. Party trick. No, no. But I had a birthday party for, in January. Chrissy came, and there's a few people there that didn't know Chrissy didn't drink. So he's he's like in the middle of the floor. Everyone's watching him do this do this thing. And I went out with a couple of the people who were at that party on Monday night, just gone, we got on to Chrissy. And I said, oh, he doesn't drink. Like, they're like, but he was drunk at your party. He was wrecked, wasn't he? I was like, no. Well, why was he doing it? Why was he, <laughs> why was he picking bank glasses up with his mouth and putting them on his forehead? <laughs> I'm uh, doing that on that yacht in London. I know, it was uh, just like your club filled with like Ponzi rich people, and he's like, "Let's check this out." And the whole, all these I rich people the were like, "This is mint." Yeah, yeah. That was min crap. Oh, yeah, I would say the XL. It was classic, <laughs> and that. Um, Ryan Gar side, most demanding riders to span a full Chrissy or Dom. Tell us a joke. I neither of us are demanding. Uh, I don't think I were. I've got both be, easy. I've got. I've got yeah, to, be. to be fair, you're both easy going. To be fair, to be fair like I'm not. This is turning into a competition, hundred percent. But 
there's got is it I've, I've almost answered my own question but i want to hear it from you it's a bit like you know the pressure situation he's at the front of british he's in super bikes really career driven element of it but then you've got the roadside which is a different pressure like i'm not going yeah. shit 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 we need you know it's but that trust thing. you, you uh, tell me what's, yeah, a, what's a bigger pressure well pop? a good a good question would be obviously the the um the cost of it going wrong on the roads is obviously a lot higher do you feel that extra pressure working on the bikes or is it exactly the same it's it's same because i'll do the same for both bikes i wouldn't yeah. like obviously you not why i more for yours and you, you know it, it, that sort of thing yeah uh so it's uh, preparation wise it's just done the same mm. uh the actual but, pressure of this yeah it's sort of it depends it's like when you were on with Crow of the year when you won championship. Yeah. Obviously like that last round and those so then then it were It's a different sort of pressure. Different pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was more, you know, everyone were nervous about more results. Things could go wrong and, yeah. you know, and safety. Like it's some some of the slightest thing just causing a DNF sort of thing. Yeah. That sort of pressure were because we knew it had to be, you know. But as far as on a general no, because I, I do the same. It's a long lap. You know, when we sat waiting, mm -hmm. like you'll come round and it's like well, a couple well, of minutes. Yeah. And if there's a red flag, it's within a minute you're back or, and you, you know, know yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Where it's and it. like when you go through, you're sort of just waiting for the next sector. The next sector, yeah. Is it, um, we sometimes get comments on our YouTube video and stuff. Sometimes like we'll, we'll touch on a topic like that, but when, like me and Dom don't then dig in and people are like, oh, why didn't you ask more about that? You no, know, that, that thing about like lock wire and more for the for the TT bikes. Yeah. If you had mine and Dom's bike next to each other, what sort of things do you do for the TT that you don't do super, for super bikes? Short of it? Uh, brake calipers and things like lock that. Wire, lock the wire. Yeah. You don't have no. to do that. Yeah, but just, I uh, bet you're the same. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I prefer yeah, to see it's it. Just, yeah, yeah. And yeah. What, what else? And there's, uh, well, I say lock, lock, basically lock wiring and say you want on yours you just because there can be quick changes you you won't really do see a lot of pads back and things like that in calipers but i tend to do that on yours as well because when you're qualifying mm -hmm. you want a quick like a quick change don't you yeah so that's something that's come from roads i think into sort of bsb right and things like that but yeah you just basically it just gets a lot harder time at the tt than it does like with yours you sort of know what to check mm -hmm. after you've worked on it for three or four rounds you sort of know what could possibly be loosening off where but the TT is everything do you, know, um, do, you, do you know like there's a few places at the TT where the, the bike's fully sum out do you have to put different sum plugs on to I've changed are they spe yeah. are there special like TT sum plugs or something or no you sum that's something else you just check that you can you not get counter sum ones you know you, you, you can get counter sum ones but it's like the, it's just the compression of it and it's it's like you say it would be better if it was flattened off but in the same breath you're better off it's having a bit of metal having contact because it's, it's it going it, to hit the sump anyway isn't that, it? exactly yeah, so you're yeah, better off instead of like... grinding away at the sump because imagine that surface plane you've got a bigger surface area to actually catch and drag if you've got a pinpoint it's like that you're better off having the plug being right. tapped mm. away mm. essentially but yeah um because you lock wire them in on any bike in any any sport yeah but what you tend to do as well you, you swap out a lot of titanium parts mm -hmm. on a tt bike compared to a road bike you get a better better grip of it you know you can snap titanium putting it in and it's a little mm. bit different isn't it yeah you're better yeah. off having steel parts on that side but it's like tip x is your friend as well Mm. Jesus, you just mark everything, mm. don't yeah. you? Like, yeah. do you know when it comes tap that, mark that, do this. When, when you get your uh, your big bike, obviously, sort of Crowley looks after the, all the technical side for me and like the sort of maintenance and whatever for, for yourself. Are you looking after it yourself? No, you are. <laughs> I shit thee not. <laughs> I, you know, no, I, I wouldn't ride it to the shops if he was touching it. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. I'm not. Wait, I'm like, the world's worst mechanic, by the way. No, I'm no, surprised no. you knew what a sun plug was. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the thing is, I can do. I'm, I'm incredibly analog in a digital age. Like I open a laptop, my brain would melt. That that is the truth, you know. I, like I, I can fix my saw and stuff like that. And both we had a full proper lemmy discussion. Like I, I'm, I'm so grateful to have Piggy there because what's going to happen is um, Fran and Neil are going to look after their 600 and super twin in the counting camp, and we're going to try and put the teams together at the Isle of Man. And then my dad, who's getting involved this year, and Piggy. And the good thing is that is a foot that is a bunch of that is a team that aren't scared to over talk each other. 
And what I like about that is there's no ego going, well, I've done it, you don't have to check it. These two will ask, him and my dad will ask each other a million times over again, did you do the front sprocket? I'll check it again and check it again and check it again and check it again. Now, the the good thing about the Isle of Man is, because they're evening practices, you've theoretically got to hold it. It doesn't half go by quickly, uh, doesn't it? Oh, it does half, yeah. So you get your wheels out, check it, but you have a full day to prep for a two-lap a two lap sprint. Like you say, with you, British, and all you British lads, you're out in, out in, out in, and that pressure pot's slightly different. Mm. And is, it, is it just a quick, I suppose for all three of you, especially when there's more than one person working on a bike, in order for there to be no nuance and it's like just there's no grey area it's like ev everyone's clear of what's been done and what hasn't yeah. is there like checklists and stuff like before the that's spike? what that's how we operate so apple yards are really good at um the basically like so tim looks at the back of the bike i'll look at the front of the bike if there's a problem then obviously everybody jumps in it tim's the number one mechanic uh, there's a checklist of things that you do every time it comes in everybody does the same job every time so, so I push it out, Tim puts the rear stand on. So there's just a constant routine. Is that a physical checklist as yeah. well? Like a full on yeah. clipboard job? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, spot on. That's maybe something you've got accountability for it then, right? Because one thing that, um, so this was from a book that I read ages ago, and it was talking about, um, do you know, it's called black box thinking. And, you know, in every aeroplane, there's a black box so that if, if there is a, an accident, which is orange, it's, it's got nothing to do with, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's got nothing to do with insurance purposes or anything. It's so that accidents don't happen. And there was a, years ago, there was a, there was a, in a short period of time, there was a few crashes that were ever so similar. And like, the, and it was because of the black box that they looked in detail. And it turned out that there was like, um, there was two handles that had the same sort of feel or look quite similar. And what was happening is when other things were starting to go wrong and the pilot was in a stress situation, which you wouldn't normally feel in in practice, they would accidentally like um, do something instead of putting the wheels out and then the planes were crashing. So they made it like a pull and a, and then put the other handle as like something completely different. Oh. And that, that accident never, ever happened again. And it's it, and, uh, used like that. Now with, you've kind of got to be a little bit like that with bikes because especially well any more bikes anyway but especially at the tt and like the road racing got to be like crystal clear so that's maybe a good little like a system mm. that you but like like you say you know going back to the lock wire thing it's when you lock wire something you physically see it done you wouldn't put lock wire like you know if you were like building rebuilding the caliber cleaning out and everything like that yeah. you put it all back together you put it on you tighten it then you lock wire it so when you walk by the bike you're like i've done that mm. Yeah, you know, yeah, and you'll know it's done as well. Exactly, that, that's, that's you. exactly it. Even like Sprocket Bot, like the Manx Grand Prix regs are slightly different, to the, like massively different mm. to be fair. Mm. They let you get away with more at the TT, but you can you can, you can lock by the whole bike, like Sprocket Bolts on the rear and mm. it's just one less thing. You know? I, it, it, do you know, <laughs> it's funny. With, the amount of weight that must get out of the bike. Uh, do you know, like um, I, my brain works in a way where like I love like th like that sort of clarity and like clear things. And, and I remember, I think you we've talked about this before. Do you know when you pull up at a junction and like the person next to you will say, yep, yeah, or uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 you're okay or whatever like that. And like you always check yourself anyway. And uh, do you know our friend Tom Salisbury? Uh, yeah. Like he, uh, he's got like a really like um, sort he's of cool job, yeah. like real, yeah. yeah, like very um, prestigious sort of job. And uh, when when we're in the car, and if he's there, and he'll say like clear left, and you just you don't even have to check. Yeah, and, like, you just you, go. But yeah, it's uh, it's what you know he's going to do now if he's listening to this <laughs> for a bit of fun. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. going to be like wagging, comes going to go clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> but, uh, he's a question. Would you continue racing without? I'm not even asking that. Without well, Piggy, I'd How never. Could you not? I, wanna, I never. That's what I mean. That's, yeah. that, that was just such a stupid <laughs> question. That it's just like it's just the confidence been, building. Him. Been uh, you've been working with. We've been working together since 2000. And, you introduced 2010, but like properly uh, yeah. from 2011 onwards. I mean, mm. so it's like quite 11, a while. Yeah, yeah. 11 years. Going into yeah, 11 years. You are an enigma, mate. You yeah. can just drop you. you. You can drop you in a war zone. You'd make a friend. <laughs> I tell you, you what. Know what I mean? no, like, yeah, do right. you know? And going back to the whole superbike thing as well. Obviously, it's like being a dream of mine to get into superbikes and to do and uh, to to go and just to do that first testing to get everyone together the full team together the, the to get the bike out and like actually be on track it yeah. honestly felt like a massive achievement in itself oh, yeah. uh, it's like it's um and i wouldn't to be honest i wouldn't really want to be doing it with with another group like i've uh, um i think it's yeah it is really cool and like i just feel like unbelievably grateful to there's like th hundreds thousands of people kind of pulled together to make it happen and mm. um 
yeah, not one per it's not like one person's came in and sorted it. Like, there's so many people like pushing together to but make Josh it did that at Apple Yards, but we're not talking yeah. about that too. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah just <laughs> yeah. everyone is it's how it is it, it, it's so how it all went, I thought were unbelievable. It were like Yeah. And you weren't far off I mean fastest BM were Hickman, were it? Yeah, I think and I was, you, yeah. right. And you weren't far off him. You well, weren't too... Un- yeah, I think it was about a second and a half. Or something yeah, like second that, and a half. Of, yeah, yeah. In, so in terms of racing, I know a second and a half is massive. Yeah, but yeah. It's, um, but you yeah. know, you were saying you were two and a half seconds off at fastest. Yeah. You were like closer to fastest BM, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Who's so, that? Yeah. Who's that? That's interesting. <laughs> I mean, we're getting sacked. We're getting a promotion. One of the other. There you go, John. I don't know who it is. It's my mum. <laughs> <laughs> She's asking after Piggy. Yeah. You teach I reckon me. we do look similar. You know, but, you know, there could be something yeah. there. One wild out yeah. night in Newcastle. <laughs> Dad, anyway. Cross, cross this emotional bridge later on. <laughs> I spot. Oh, uh, did I, I, I'll just have to double check. I can't remember if we'll finish the... Yeah, yeah, we've got a few. Uh, on a typical BSB weekend, what's the most stressful part and what's the most enjoyable? And what track do you like the most? Love the jokes. Uh, we'll most just... stressful part? I sort of think qualifying's a bit... That's That's the one where I feel... Especially with stock. I don't know what it's going to be like with super bikes. It's going to be a bit. But yeah, I think qualifying, because that's when, you know, because you're a better race than qualifier, aren't you? Yeah. That, that is a definite. Yeah, that's a really polite way of saying I'm rubbish at qualifying. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, God. What about you, Josh? Were you a qualifier? Like, I was a nothing. <laughs> I was I was bad at both. Man, should have man. You were British. No, I, was ne- I was never a very good qualifier. Always went better in the race. Could always do yes. the race on a Friday morning and drag you along, really. Yeah, yeah. I've actually I've actually worked for Josh a couple of times on the pit board when he was in uh, British Super Sport. And, uh, yeah, boy, can yeah. you remember the Evo class? You used to get like a regular podium finish in the Evo class. Yeah, I was a nobody. <laughs> listen to yourself. Have <laughs> a that was a, what was a nobody class really, wasn't it? But yeah, we finished third in that. Mm-hmm. 2014. I ran like a privateer effort, like ran yeah. yourself. I remember mm-hmm. it was a proper nice outfit. I used to do. I used to when I wasn't racing. I used to go and do the pit board for them. Jesus, and, uh, yeah, he had he some used, good road trips in that little van, didn't we? Yeah, he won, yeah, class. He once did a, a European Superstock meeting at Silverstone as well. Like, I, uh, was Vandermark in that in the in the, then or that was the year um, before? I'm not sure who was in it then. Actually, I think like Dakota Mamola and a few of the, those lads. In, again, I crashed on the first lap of the race. <laughs> <laughs> I love we're building such a mid pitch here. Like, don't worry, I crashed on the first lap. I'm just level it out there. Wasn't Still great. cool, but um, I'm oh, getting oh, some oh, bad oh. feedback here. I'm not sure what it is. It's, it's, it might be this. What a way! What a way! Yeah, that's good. Cool. We're going to make a return back into the British paddock. What, what's what's we've, the future hold for been, Josh? We've been talking about it, but um, we'd have to see it. Uh, I fancy I'm going to t- uh, test a super sport bike this year, um, and just see how slow you'd be. I really fancy it. I think now I've been like working for a good few years and I've got a bit of money behind us and stuff like that, and it's just an itch that you st- I still haven't scratched really, but. Uh, I don't have any like huge ambitions in the sport anymore, but I would love to come and do. I'd love to go and do a British Super Sport again. So I'm gonna have a link, have a test this year and see if I can lose some weight and stuff like that, and uh, go from there. But you know, I think there's a certain, I think there's a certain like energy energy people give off when the when there's still that sort of itch to scratch. Yeah, and there's like um. I th- there's like something special like when people are like going out and getting it and like. And in the racing paddock, there's so many people, like, everyone you sort of meet, it's a very, um, it's a very, like, close group. Everyone that's there are, like, doers on. They're, like, yeah. n- anyone in the teams, all the riders, all the families and stuff, everyone's just a doer. And it's, yeah, um, yeah it, I think there's something special about, like, not just sort of surviving and, like, sort of... W- w- and that's with either riding or being in po- involved in the team in another way. Everyone's kind of, like, trying to get the best out of their life. And there's something special in that, I think. What would you be doing, Piggy? If you weren't in motorcycles, I, I could just see you as a mint doorman. Uh, you, you've yeah. got the well, crack of a doorman, just start headbutting people. You know, I could just see you working a door somewhere. I think it'd be outstanding. I don't know what, what I'd do. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Because when you think about time that you spend, you know, Hi. that gets taken up with racing, mm-hmm. it's unbelievable. I reckon, isn't it? I reckon you'd be go down well as one of those. Uh, no, the butlers. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> the butler. The butler. What a butler like and a bachelor, buff. bachelor party, yeah. <laughs> 500 quid a night piggy, here he comes that's in. A, that's a very different website. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, thanks for your password. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, oh yeah, man. Bruce, well, I think we'll wrap things up. We've got <laughs> yeah. After that note, <laughs> yeah, okay. we've got uh, next out we're at, down at Silverstone. So when this podcast goes out, it's sun, so late Sunday night, and then we're out at Silverstone on Wednesday and Thursday for the final BSB test, and then the following week. So like not that weekend, but right. the following weekend is the first round of the British yeah, like Easter, isn't it? Actually, Easter still. weekend, yeah. So Jesus. mega, and um, we haven't actually had all the. I've been working on it with Josh with all the garage boarding and stuff we, we're getting that wrapped and like finishing the design and getting that wrapped very soon uh, special shout out to all of the people that have joined my supporters wall look it's coming together really nice and I think it'll be like a real cool addition to have like a collage of uh, of people's pictures so if anyone is wanting to to join that that'll be running all season uh just drops a message and we'll sort out something with that and uh, yeah aside from that um has anyone else got anything to wrap things up no, well, yeah, when, when you next out, Sil- and, you're at yeah. Silverstone this weekend. Yeah, I'm crap me pants because obviously I take minus three out there. So oh. it's a very, very, very beautiful bike, and I'm gonna go out and enjoy it. But I uh, try and go as fast as I can without knacking the job. And where are you racing that 250 this year? Just the roads. Uh, so we're doing Belown the pre TT on it. Right, and that's then the, the Southern Hundred, isn't it? The Southern Hundred circuit, which I'm really looking forward to because that bike will sit lovely at that place. And then gonna go down Bray Hill on it, a classic TT. Are you thinking of going out in south of that? You know, Skerries or just with the timetable? It's like, go, like quickly going back to the eye thing. It's if it's the surgeons, yes or no. So I've bet like. Um, may have to go for surgery directly after the TT but if, if that happens that's a lovely six week window before the Southern 100 yeah so at the moment with the Southern 100 um, I'll be just going on the big bike unless someone could provide a Super Twin or a 600 but then after that it'll be leading on but I, I would have run out of buy, money by then Piggy mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's like a, the Southern and then after the Southern it'll be over the Armoy sorry yeah we've got Armoy and then we've got Class of TT so because uh, classic classes we can well, so I want to come over, but because they've shortened it. Yes, I right, that's the job. Just, done yeah, yeah. That's the job. Did you get accommodation sort of from the TT, by the way? Uh, yeah, yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. Are you staying yeah, somewhere so close to uh, up near signpost? Oh, lovely, happy so, days so, uh, downhill. Yeah, I can drop you off at night. You can have a few scoops and then you can roll yeah, the work. Can, there you go. Can't, can't win no tail. Mm. Happy days, I put, I put out a few podcasts ago about accommodation, but I got sorted. Thanks very much to Max Ingham. And uh, looking really looking forward to the two weeks over there. It'll be absolutely amazing. You're going to be uh, working. Yeah. Yeah. You get four yeah, people, you lads. That's yeah, it's it. Not, like, it's not going to be an holiday, Chrissy. There's work you're not to be, be done. working. Yeah, there's four people in Pit Lane. Normally, it's only three. Right. So you have to have a designated fire man in that in that situation. So I think you should do the visor change. I'm trying to. I think you should do the wheel change. Piggy will direct you how yeah. to do it while holding the fire extinguisher. Hurry up, Chris! You. Yeah, I'll just so fa- you shit yourself. I'll definitely hold the fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, class. On one. that note, massive thanks, lads, for coming on the podcast. Yeah. Thanks for your well, time. No, thanks for having me. And um, huge thanks to our uh, podca- podcast sponsor, Colchester Kawasaki. Massive thanks to them and a big thanks to all of our patrons and for sending all the questions in and stuff. We're over, we're uh, doing another podcast today, so there'll be one for next week and uh, we'll look forward to getting them. As the season gets tighter, obviously we were talking about it before, m- m- mine and Dom schedules are like so tight. So uh, we'll just we'll just be squeezing podcasts in whenever we can. So the next until- one is the last one we're doing <laughs> for the rest of the year. Until Lee, when you see him, I've mended my caravan. Because he always takes Mickey out of my caravan. Does he? So tell him I've mended it. But why is that? He just says it's a shed, basically. <laughs> <laughs> He's always impressed with beer that's inside. There you are, champion. <laughs> I hope he turns up with like a Winnebago. Have you seen, like seen Piggy's caravan? I'm intrigued to know what you've done to make it not a shed. <laughs> <laughs> but we're a bit flapping about it, back, so, so we, mend them back. You bought a new one? No, no, that's an exit. We need, um, we need if there's it. any sponsors out there with no, a caravan, no, can we sponsor so like, your caravan? You've had that, you must have had that part, uh, the caravan for about five years now. Ooh, ah, easy. Five, six years. Yeah. How well, many victims would you, would you, have you had? Would, <laughs> would you care to share how much you, you paid for it? Well, so it, it, between two of us, me and Sutty, right? it was £300. <laughs> so like £150 each. And it's, it's honestly it's been a crack. Well, this, this side of the millennium. <laughs> it's done, done you proud, on it? I've, yeah, had, I've had many nights in there. It's... Yeah. Yeah, and your dad's been in, hasn't he? Do a breakfast. Not at the same that... time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just clarify that one. Yeah, full breakfast in yeah. the morning. Did you break, a breakfast for Brogue? You, think you, you, think you know it? someone, Josh. There you go. I know. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's been a good, it's been a good caravan, hasn't it? Yeah, it just goes to show you don't have to have the the big fancy motor. No, hundred percent. No. Yeah. And on, on that note, massive thanks to everyone, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Take care. Cheers. <laughs> Chasing the racing.
Powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles.